Hi. Hello. Hey. All right. Hello. Look at this. Look at this group. Are we ready hello. to go or what? Hello, hello. Hi, everybody. Hello. Hello. How's everyone's Tuesday going? It is Tuesday. Yes, it is Tuesday. Everyone all day good. long. I'm missing tacos. <laughs> oh, you're missing Taco Tuesday, huh? <laughs> all right. Well, uh, for those watching, we are excited to have another multi stream with a bunch of our artists that are streaming on ZBrush Live and always sharing stuff with the community as well. So we did these for the summit. Some of you were in the summit one. And it was very popular. People really enjoyed it. So uh, due to request, everybody said, hey, let's do some more of these. And you guys also, all you artists, wanted to jump in on this as well. So thank you for taking your Tuesday to be a part of this again as well. It's all It was fun, the summit one. Thanks for the invite. I, 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 Ashley's making me do this now. It's like that. It's fine. <laughs> it's just one of those things. It's Dang going. <laughs> it's, it's <laughs> See, this this time I don't have to MC this. I'm yeah. excited. Yeah, you're a <laughs> part of it now. Yeah. You're a part of it. I love Shane's fest, festival background. Very good there. I like Happy that. Holidays. Happy holidays. Daniel Happy looking holidays. good. You got the Matrix behind you. I'm ready. Uh, Ara's got Star Wars behind him. Steven's got the secret cabinet uh, in the back, okay? Ashley's got uh, a bunch, bunch of statues that she's done in the back, as well as Franco and Andre. <laughs> I like this. This is like a festival of backgrounds. I like it, too. So we're going to be uh, going through all this, and everyone's going to be sculpting something possibly differently. You'll, you're going to find out here soon. We're going to jump from screen to screen. We'll be having conversations. We'll be monitoring. I'll be monitoring the comments, so if there's questions coming through... <laughs> Uh, I'll do my best to throw them at any of the artists. Uh, but I know even the ones that we did during the summit, some of us just start even asking each other questions and talking and wanting to share some things. So I'm sure that it'll go that route as well. So as we go through here, we're going to be bouncing around to every artist. And they do have a theme, again, to just have some fun. So a holidays theme is what we're all trying to do here, just have some fun with that. And uh, let's let's get going. Let's just start bouncing around. Uh, and I want to again thank Andre, Franco, Ash, Stephen, Ara, Daniel, and Shane for being here with me and with uh, everyone watching. Thanks for coming out. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, thanks. Stephen hasn't stopped smiled, smiling since he's joined. Dude, it's, it's like a tattoo, but it's like carved into my face. I, I'm like my face. I live for ZBrush, man. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Well, I'm just going to start with adding Shane since he's got a lot up right now or he was working on. You started this last year, you said. Correct? I did. I started this during a Pixelogic live stream last year. I never I never finished it. So I'm like, hey, it's an opportunity to continue to work on this thing. So, yeah. This, let's this let's let's solve the debate we had and maybe the the, uh, the, the chat. Is it so is it Krumpus or Krampus? <laughs> Krampus. I think it's we Krampus? Know Krampus. It's like Krampus. Krampus. I say it's, it's Krampus, right? Because it's with an A. It's I say it's Krampus. Krampus. That, Krampus. That's what you're doing. So ask some German people. Yeah. Just for German people. Oh, okay. It, it, it is. It is, it is Krampus. Krampus. It is Krampus, right? Is it from Germany? I'm just being a dick. Krampus <laughs> 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 or so. Is like it originally that. from Germany? Is it? I think no, so, yeah. yeah it's something I, don't, I, I, I think don't it's a German-Austrian folklore. Yeah. Something oh, is like it? That. Okay. Yeah. I, I did not know that. All right. We can stop the train. Just learn something. Perfect. There you go. <laughs> there you go. There I don't go. know what's up with the bundle of sticks on fire either. I don't know what that's all about. Uh, I know the oh, the, uh, the stick bundle? He yeah. uses that to beat children. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> so Shane's going the uh, to the fun route Okay, for today's stream. Fun, fun route. Yep. Yeah beat the kids for christmas <laughs> i'm not i'm not joking about that one <laughs> so did you are you using your new hair technique on this yet uh no this is the uh the, the macon hairbrush that um you can get from funky bunnies 3d.com so that's what i used on this one specifically um, so you can see how it's all just clumps of hair um now the new one the new tech hair technique I was using on the uh, current live that I'm using, uh, that I'm doing, that's this guy. So you can kind of see here that new technique, which is essentially just a, 
carve brush, but I'm using the Accu Curve along with the Move Infinite for the hair tips, and I'm really enjoying that a lot. So, yeah. That's right. a lot like my hair. Uh, my hair brush. Oh, I thought you were saying your hair as it right now. My hair, yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. My hair. <laughs> like, yes. Okay. Well, let's keep moving here. Let's get everyone. We'll get, well, we'll get Ashley's up. Let's. Uh, Jeez, uh, I, yeah, the beautiful sphere. Nice. It's, a it's, Why, a it's a snowman. Sphere. You're going snowman, <laughs> I would say, yes. Probably an eldritch horror snowman. There we go. Just as cold with, as I'm feeling. Keep with the theme. <laughs> keep with the theme, right? Shane, starting us off. That looks good. Did you use the uh, Did you use the cloth brush for the eye dimple before you put? Oh it? no, I just oh, sculpted no, that, just... but that would have been a good one. Yeah. <laughs> it does look like it. Yeah. Yeah, you just uh, you just chunk it in with the clay buildup. And yep. then go over to Damien Standard and mess it up somewhere like this. We like it's a sun. <laughs> Radial. Very beautiful. Very nice. Oh All yes. Nice. Looking good. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's coming. It's the beginning. It's the beginning. All spheres okay, look, are beautiful. It's a good place. Everything to start. starts from a sphere. Yeah. Yes. Well, let's come to let's go to Franco because he's got no, I got, I got not. I just started. Is it, this. is it? But yeah, well, we're all. They're all just. You're all just starting. Yeah, yeah. Start. Is, is it? Are you going uh, elf then? Yeah, a little goblin, something like that. Because last year goblin. I just got with a, uh, a Krampus. Oh, there you <laughs> go. That, that oh, I man. did. Uh, I'm printing stuff like that. And uh, now I want to do something like that. Uh, a little goblin. That's so with. cool. That is and awesome all the uh, all the, the the hair and the fur parts all just pulling on it with what a snake hook or no well I did a brush and like a brush oh, okay. with some of these shapes you know, and just yeah in my and dynamic. it's nice. awesome that's yeah, awesome cool. that's great and now I'm just going for little goblins very nice. Franco, your your piece reminds me of um, if you guys have ever played the game uh, until dawn. Until dawn, the uh, oh yeah, the window yeah. in there are freaking creepy. They're really creepy, like humanoid design, and your face is even. Oh. I think it's even better. It's really good. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, it's I creepy. need to check it out, but yeah, I haven't. Game. I haven't been playing games for years now, man. Is mm. I don't know what what happened, but it was like I don't know. Every time I used to play a game, I just kind of felt like. I wanted to do the stuff in the game, not just keep playing it. Right. Like I'm, I'm, I haven't finished Last of Us, for example, the first oh, one I'm talking about. Oh, so. great. You should definitely <laughs> finish that one. That's good. Yeah, game. I need to. But that's yeah. the, the last game I play. Yeah, it's a very cool piece. I like it. All right. Well, let's pulse up Andre. Oh, you're doing the gremlin, huh? Yes. Yeah, I was thinking that now. Seeing the thing turning around behind you. Yeah. It's a Christmas movie, is it? Is yeah. there? Do you guys? Yeah, all it is. Movie. I watch it every year. <laughs> yeah. What about the Die Hard? Hard? That's always uh, a debatable one. It's Die, Die Hard. Hard. It's a Christmas. <laughs> oh, it's Christmas. Okay, it's Christmas. Yeah. These dark days always reminds me of the good old movies of the eighties. Yeah, <laughs> those are the, were the movies. Yeah, man. You and can't go wrong with movies too. from the eighties. Let's be honest. Ashley knows this about me. Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, I wasn't around, but I love 80s movies. I just don't know nearly as many niche ones as you do. <laughs> uh, useless information. That's what I have. Nice. So you started with the sphere, I'm assuming, as well, and just started yeah, blocking yeah. them out. The mighty sphere and just move it around and hope some lucky accident, maybe. So you're we'll going see. for the professor from number two in the top right? Is that what you're all I'm not sure yet. Is it going cartoony or realistic? Maybe a mix of both of them. Yeah. Nice. We'll see. Fun. That'll be a fun one. Yeah. All right. Okay, I'm going to jump to Steven. Oh. There we go. Are you doing a Santa? Yeah. I've got, I've got, it's got, it's going to have quite a little twist on it, but it's going to be kind of, kind of fun and just funny and just trying to start yeah. off with locking in this head. Yeah. A lot. Oh, shoot. I always do that where it's like I hit the V key instead of actually getting my full 
move brush. <laughs> oh yeah. The victory. I move my, I move my cursor too quickly. <laughs> Is the th oh someone's asking? Is the thing a Christmas movie? Yes, it's oh, snowing. it should be. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, what about that? Yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah. I just watched that the yes. other day, and they said like, oh, yeah, it's in. It's during Christmas time, isn't it? It's December. Isn't yeah. It? yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. I totally Christmas forgot about that. You watched what? You watched the one from the eighties or the one yeah. from the fifties? I watched the remake. Oh no! The, well, yeah, the eighties one, the original, well, my original. Yeah, the one. But then there, the 2011 oh, one's like a direct prequel, actually. So if you yeah. watch that yeah. one first, and then you watch the 80s one, they sync up perfectly, which is pretty cool, yeah. actually. Yeah, it but was... you miss the surprise of the, I mean, a bath, in my opinion, at least. Yeah. I can't I mean, like the the, they, yeah. yeah. Kurt Russell's and then awesome. the original, original one, maybe it was the 40s. The original, I think I want to say it was 54. The original thing. I didn't even know that existed. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah, wow. it's a remake. I knew, but I the didn't. The eighties one was not the original. Original. I was thought it was. It's John John Carpenter's the thing. I Call guess that's how we can refer. Yeah, he's been making yeah. stuff since four hours. Useless information. Let's move on. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's not useless. You get inspired pop from culture. all of that. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, lots of pop culture. All right. Well, that'll be a fun one. That looks good. That'll be a fun one to do. It's looking good. Let's move on to R so we get everyone's screen up so we know where everyone was. Okay. You're doing a, what do you oh nice. Ghost of Christmas. Oh yeah, that that yeah. <laughs> yeah that's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Which but that those there are a lot of those. Hang on. Like a lot of those. <laughs> I like the Bill Murray one. What the Bill Murray <laughs> one? I think it's Here really fun. Uh, <laughs> so Ghost to Christmas Yet to Come is what I'm doing. I'll oh, gotcha. Um, I thought you so, were yeah. making a Drake joke. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> we have to jump in with some meme action. But yeah, um, I, I kind of thought, you know, that would be kind of a cool uh, kind of cyberpunk ghost of Christmas yet to come. Why not? Yeah, the teaser one. This, so this is going to be like a mask? Uh, no, it's going to be his head. Uh, you know, oh, okay. I'll, I'll obliterate the head that's underneath. But I'm just kind of getting some sort of a cool kind of design in first, and then the next thing I'm going to do is just kind of get started uh, with my photo bashing thing with the body. So I'm going to switch to that. And let's bring in some textures and go to town on it. So, um, oops, my brush. I like how oh. you're working with that sculptress. What's that? I said I like how low resolution you're working with that mask. Oh, with thing. the skull? Yeah. Yeah. So that um, basically, I um, I brought in I, I I brought in kind of a stock skull that I have in my Z tools. It's this thing right here, uh, which is pretty elaborate. And it's got subdivision levels and everything. So, uh, but what I do is I um, tessimated it. Mm -hmm. So with tessimate, you get like really cool kind of polygonal results like this. Love and that. then, um, and then you can just kind of get some shapes out of it, and uh, and and just develop it into something more kind of hard surface as you go on along. So. Yeah, I like that Testament remembers the uh, actual form. So even when you go yeah. up, you can go back down and get the form back. Yeah, I don't, yeah, know, no, any, I don't know if anybody in here has been using Testament. I know Shane and I, oh, yeah. and I, I had a conversation it about it. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I mean, don't you, do get, you, you get triangles and stuff, but um, you, you can, you can, uh, I can, I can fix that later. And also, the other thing that I just discovered, which is kind of cool, is that you can also activate symmetry. So I just activated the X symmetry, so I get the same thing on both sides. I used to do that. As a separate step, so it's kind of cool to just get that in one shot. Um, but yeah, yeah. For those that have never used it, if you you turn on Tessimate and then you can move your slider back and forth, and it'll just update. And even if you yeah. put your slider too high a polygon size and you lose your form, all you got to do is just drop the slider down, and then it'll actually give you your form back with more triangles. So I don't I don't know if anybody's watching has used that before but that's the yeah, nice thing about decimate it's a lot like decimate a lot like yeah where but then, yeah yeah like the decimation mass where you can uh go back and up and down through your decimations yeah yeah absolutely 
It's definitely handy if you're going to use It's obviously part of Sculptures Pro when it came out. So it's very handy to use with Sculptures Pro. And then you can also mask off and only testimate the section that's on mask as well. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Now, so I sometimes when I'm using Sculptures Pro like that, I'll, I need a little bit more triangulation in a certain area. You just use Testimate to do it. Sweet. Wait, so Paul, what you're saying is you can mask stuff out and it won't Testimate the areas that are masked? Yep. Oh, dude, that's I so know. cool. It's a game changer. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know uh, that at all. Or, or, you know, I also like using with Sculptures Pro, like changing your smooth brush and dropping it down to the intensity of... Oh, that's the best, yeah. Yeah, one. And then just... In essence, that's what you're going to do with Testimate, too. Mm -hmm. So you can locally Testimate. Wait, what, what was that again? You, you do what? You use your what with the you brush side? Here, no I'll, show. I'll, I'll show. show. I'll show. show. I'll show. show it. Me. I'll show. Let me show. I'll show. I'm in okay. it. I'm in it to win oh, it, people. Okay. I'm in it to win it. Uh, oh, so you're the, you're the most the Anna, then. I, I <laughs> didn't. I didn't this, this is not my model. This is this is Nick Zuccarello's model that ships with ZBrush. I, uh, I had no part in this at all. Okay, this is all, and you all can use the same model. It's, it's in your boy. it's in your tool. So Nick yeah. donates this to the community. So he just updated it, by the way, for twenty twenty one point seven. So awesome it's an updated know. version of this, and he's got <laughs> layers and everything on it as well. I'm just going to get rid of the layers. So what what we're talking about, just so everyone is aware is this Tessimate over here. So I'm gonna throw on my magnifier as I like to do. So this big Tessimate button, and then you have Decimate and Tessellate, okay? And then you have a polygon slice. So if you just Tessimate, yes! <laughs> <laughs> Ship it. Ship it. <laughs> Wait, what's the rest of it look like? Oh, yes! <laughs> oh, my gosh, it's, 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 it's a new Christmas ornament. <laughs> Okay. okay. Oh my God, sculpt it. Sculpt. Actually, you know what? This would be a good. You ship this, but then you can sculpt on it, and then you, you put it on your tree. Oh, that would be a fun one. Talk about it. Be compass. a fun one. Okay. So we're just going tangents now. So, anyways, what I was talking about with everybody is this slider that if you start dropping it, you can see the form start actually coming back. <laughs> because then there's more triangles being added in smaller triangles so you can see it's not as it's starting to come back and it's not as funny anymore compared to when you go really really large oh yeah oh. <laughs> perfect <laughs> perfect tweak head perfect very good there you go right so <clears throat> you can use it dynamically in the sense that you can mask off an area right and then now this area is the unmasked area so then that that's the area see that's going to change. Mm. Oh, nice. So okay. that's, the, that's the only so area cool. that's going to change for you, right? And then because we were talking about it with Sculptures Pro, mm -hmm. you were asking what I like to also do, Ari, you were asking is, I like to make a smooth brush with the Z intensity mm -hmm. down to like nothing. So you're not, you're not smooth in the surface, but then you're adding, you're adding tessellation, Resolution. right? So then you can go oh, to smaller and then wow. just add tessellation. See, I just want some more tessellation through here. Nice. And then I'm I'm not smoothing the surface because it's not strong enough to smooth the surface. Whoa. You can do it with any brush. I mean, as long as you yeah. have it at, at zero, and you yeah. add a, a lot of polygons in the part you want, it's super cool. Yeah, I like to. I use. I usually use the smooth because then I can still stick with my sculpting brush, switch to smoothing mm -hmm. brush, and then do that. But like I said, what we're talking about, you can also use Tessimate to do it, like as well. There you go. That is really cool. Thanks for the top tip. Thanks, dude. You're, you're yeah, welcome. I'm using it right now. <laughs> All right. I like it. Well, let's 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 keep jumping around. You don't need uh, to keep watching my screen. I'm not. I'm not. I haven't started sculpting yet. I might. I might start sculpting here, which we're gonna have Kyle oh. start jumping it down for us. The gremlin's moving along there, Andre. I like. Yeah, it. just just playing around. Still you know where ZBrush well. artists were, were having a theme of holidays and almost all of them are going dark. <laughs> it's nothing <laughs> more fun. Just right. Yeah. Switch gears. Well, put, put the spin on it, right? Put the spin on the holidays. What I say. Yeah, it makes them I, fun. It's yeah. fun for the whole family. Yeah, well, I started doing <laughs> Christmas ornaments with my daughter every year. Nice. nice. So we did that at fun. Disney and it was awesome. Mm -hmm. What what about Disney? Oh, you get that. that was something that we did at Disney. It was like an annual um, 
uh, Christmas ornament gift exchange. And we would all like, it was a huge thing at Imagineering where, where it's like everybody would get into like this heavy crafting of ornaments and everything like that. And um, I was, I was teaching like uh, ZBrush workshops at the time. And so a bunch of people started using uh, ZBrush to do it. And some other people were doing it already, but it was just, it was just fun. <laughs> yeah. A lot of fun. Yeah. It's, it's fun. like, well, now I've gotten requests for me. Like my daughter, comes and loves me, draws me a piece, but this is what I want you to make this year. It's so gotta look, it's gotta look like. I'm like, okay, you got it. Oh. Funny, funny, funny. All right. Coming along there, Andre. Uh, Mike, you're asking about does it make decimation irrelevant? No. Testament's more of a sculptural item, I would say, to use it sculpturally with Sculptures Pro. Decima uh, decimation master is more for reducing your polygon count so you can get it out of zbrush for 3d printing or getting in a game engine or i've even done decimation master just for rendering so i don't have to bring displacement mm -hmm. maps and normal maps over and just yeah. throw it right in your render and just hit render or and, just and remember to keep your poly paints yeah yep and then that yeah. keep your poly paint will also drive the, the decimation as well my daughter does see me as a toy store, 100%. Yes. What about you, Stephen? Do your kids see you as a toy store? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I've made a few toys for them. Yeah. Not, not like, not like uh, big things that they can throw around because, I mean, the only printer I have is, uh, is a resin printer. So it won't like, uh... yes. I mean, there's only so much they can do, but they have, they have some things like on their shelf and. <laughs> Yeah. And they're always so excited about it that they'll take it before it's done painted and things like that. <laughs> you know? Sure. Absolutely. There are some new like tough resins and stuff like that that you can use. Uh, they, yeah. they will yeah, they will support like handle at least uh, like kids playing with them. Yeah, you can yeah, get ABS do. based. You can get ABA ABS based uh, resin, Steve, so that it wouldn't break. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, I need to, I need to go through and explore some of those uh, <laughs> some of those things. I haven't I haven't gotten into the, like the newer resins that uh, that Farm Labs come out with and whatnot. But yeah, you can even get them for like I'm using an ABS on my any cubic. So Ooh, it, how do you, how do you like that one? I, I really like what I've seen from it. Uh, I have no complaints. I I've, I've really enjoyed it. I've been printing off that one a lot as well. But, you know, but the gremlin behind me, that was printed off an FFF printer that's over my other side here, larger format. That's the uh, one with, like, the powder bed, right? Uh, um, well, here, since he switched to me, Kyle. Yeah, I was going to ask him. There, there you go. The that's the printer. So I put a little, I put a little, uh, I designed that engineering thing and I bought this. That tells you how much filament's left. Wow. And it keeps nice. it warm, oh. too, because actually filament will have um like water condensation well it's not it's not watery but you don't want to get it damp and wet right so right that's the printer that printed the big the big gremlin that's rotating or he's 20 he's so give him a size he's 24 inches so you can see there's his mic yeah, like a real, <laughs> oh, basically a real scale I, I, yeah I, well, I, yeah they were about 24 inches yeah they're about that size in the movies yeah well since we're talking about it here you go hey okay here you go here's here's the original sculpt Oh, that's like so trying cool! To wow. trying to shoot, trying to shoot, Jeez. right? So this is this is this Whoa. is a mold from the original. Wait, I got more. I got more. Since, since we're sharing. Oh, look at his face! He's so happy showing his toys. Yeah. <laughs> oh, cool. You need so to make cool. a mask for Halloween, dude. That's what you need to do. Yeah, yeah, Life-size gremlin. That'd be then, terrifying. And then here, actually. here is Spike, the original Spike. Yes. Oh, that's, that's so one. cool! Yeah. Wow. <laughs> awesome so what is like polyform what was the material is it a... this is just foam so i'm gonna put it foam, in a right yeah case. foam yeah i'm gonna put it in a glass case but i was lucky enough to go bob burns house who has pretty much almost all the original gremlins he's got the gizmos nice. and everything <laughs> That's so sick. it's pretty crazy so i'm not a gremlin nut at all <laughs> <laughs> no no not in the no, no, forget forget about it I'm surprised they haven't remade any Gremlin movies. They are. There are. There's a new, I think, series coming out. Uh, There's an animated series. Right? Yeah, I think so. There's a new series coming out. I saw it being. I saw it on one of the lists. I don't remember what streaming service. It might have been Netflix. I don't remember. They better make it good. It's the pressure. It's the I pressure. Can't, I can't remember if I've heard anything about it or not. 
I saw it on one of the lists of, hey, upcoming stuff coming out. Somebody even probably in the chat might know. I, I don't remember now, but I did see it. I do remember seeing it coming out soon. When I say soon, probably years. Probably. <laughs> this new feature is the, the one that you, you move is really good. The, the one that is like the, doing the formations with, with the move gizmo. Oh, changing your, your uh, gizmo. Yeah. Right, so. yeah. The gizmo. Oh, you want to switch to Franco's screen? No, 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 no. It's just. just oh. <laughs> I thought you were using it. <laughs> it's super dumb what I'm doing. No, but don't show my screen. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, adding the uh, kind of like a deformation ability to uh, yeah. the gizmo. You know, when I first used that yesterday on the on the stream, um, one uh, somebody in the chat was like, it's bugged, it's broken. And then somebody else is like, nope, that's how they changed it. The, it's the new fall off feature of the gizmo. And uh, because they were saying that, you know, I, I use that old uh, transpose line bend trick. And yeah, and it doesn't work when your brush focus is set to minus 100. Yeah. So you have to set it back to zero to get that bend trick to work. And uh, now I, I was like, wait a minute, why did they do that? And then it's it's the gizmo fall off. And now I prefer using that the, rather than the old transpose tweak. So. Yeah, so use the transpose line. <laughs> <laughs> we also just for the most recent patch update, we just added that also to deformers. So your deformer also will now appreciate the uh, focal shift to your gizmo. Uh, so your your and when that. I say deformer, I'm talking about the gizmo deformer. Hmm. Sure. So if you switch to a gizmo deformer, you can actually use your uh, roll off as well to manipulate how the points are going to move on the deformer. Are you talking about like the curve deformer? No, 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 the, no, the regular deformer deformer. Deformer deformer. Deformer deformer. <laughs> looks like a lattice, right? Oh, I, I got you. <laughs> the ash looks awesome. What? Oh, it's uh, uh -huh. Brack the ash. Hi, kids. <laughs> yeah, it's just like your neighborhood centipede snowman. It's no big deal. You guys want to play a game? <laughs> it reminds me of uh, Tolly, Tolly. Oh, yeah, from South Park. Mr. Hank, oh, that's funny. That should be a requirement. Yeah. Somebody has to put a voice to everyone's character in here. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's got to do it. Well, th this one's already been done then, I guess. <laughs> oh, I love the derp eyes. <laughs> <laughs> That's cute. Love it. Wait, Chief, did you just say that's cute? Did I? Did you just say that this is cute? The, <laughs> did I hear the, that right? The tooth. The tooth. Oh, the it's tooth. Like, it's a cute Snickle little tooth. tooth. He's like, but it is very cute. That yes, would make him yeah. wish well when he when he talks. Yes. <laughs> you actually made him cool. <laughs> <laughs> You want to buy to my ferret? <laughs> oh, very Is that Ara now. doing that? Yeah. Shane, I think, is still doing it. Yeah, it was me. Okay, okay. Sorry. No. That, was, that was my other guess. <laughs> like I said, holiday theme, we're going, we're going very dark. <laughs> very, very dark. Going dark. I love it. Pretty happy and cute and cuddly. You don't have to do that. Yeah, we don't have it. You know, Snow, snowmen have to stay in the shade, right? They do, unless they got an Elsa to give her, give them a cloud. <laughs> it's true. Right. I don't. I don't know just eighties. I know a lot of useless film information. I was told that to my wife. I, I, I can't remember things because my brain is already full of useless. Yeah. 80 song lyrics and movie information. <laughs> it's full. And I can't parse the data. It's in there. <laughs> can't parse the data. <laughs> you got to figure out what you want to get rid of before you can, can put more can't. information in. I can't. It won't, it won't leave my brain. <laughs> uh, I do some disc man. defragmenting. Yeah, I can't defragment my brain. It's all of quotes and lyrics and 
Uh, Whisker King, I would say go to support because I'm. I don't. I don't have any problems that I've seen over the years. So if you're talking about something, that's a very particular question about Destination Master. The best would be to go to support.pixelogic.com, make a ticket, and that way we can go back and forth with you on that. Did something happen to Destination Master? <laughs> no. Um, has anyone else, I have not found any resins that are resistant to patrol. Uh, content is trying to make it hard. I don't have any answer to that one. Oh, I can see the chat now. Oh, you can? There you go. Whoa, I didn't even realize I was there. It was no cool. That's, yeah, I wasn't just making this stuff up, people. Just pulling stuff out of my third person. <laughs> God. Is that what you call that? Okay. I know I've got 12 of them, but come on. <laughs> Wait, uh, Daniel, can you share your screen? Uh, yeah, I think I just, Kyle just sent me a message saying it went away. So let me try yeah. again. Let's see. Let's, uh, let's see here. Is that there, going now I see it. Through I see now? It. All right. I'm now. just, I'm very early on in a turkey. Oh, wait. Sorry. I think it just got rid of it. There you go. There we are. Nice. Yeah. It's super, delicious. super basic. It's all clean. Just going. Just a little dynamesh. Are you going to make it dark? I'm going to try to make it kind of cute, actually, because turkeys are kind of ugly usually, and they got like that weird, like, what is that called? Like the thing that jiggles off their face. The gobbler. Oh, the gobbler? <laughs> is that what that's called? I have no Sack. idea. This I don't know thing, thing that's like, it's it's like, <laughs> so it's like hanging off one side of the face of the face. other, and there was like flopping it around. Face. Yeah, face. <laughs> yeah. Face sack, you know that's that's wonderful. <laughs> Stephen Leonard's in here, who you were talking about with doing the Christmas ornaments at Imagineering. He's in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Enjoy. Leonard Leonard's a great guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I used to, I used to. Well, I, I don't think I ever actually got to work on a project with him, but I did see him around the office a lot. And we would stop and chat. Yeah, he's done a ton of stuff with uh, with. Uh, with Disney and everything for for years, he's he's uh, he's a phenomenal sculptor. And actually, like one of the guys that won uh, the sculpt off this year, Jamie McGoo, yeah, uh, McGow, uh, yeah. he's he's also and he's there too. <laughs> he just popped up on the chat. Yep, yep, he's there. Which Jamie, Jamie's great. Which which uh, sculpt off piece was his? This was the the Kermit the Frog and the Big Bird uh, like swapped sizes uh, and whatnot on the dock. Oh, uh, that was nice one, one of my yeah. faves. I thought that was that super was clever. It was so fun. <laughs> um, back to you, Whisker King. I would say make a support because honestly, the issue you're bringing up, I don't see an issue. So that's why I'm saying go to support. What you're bringing up, I don't see an issue. So that's why I'm saying go to support. Uh, so that we can have a conversation back and forth and see exactly what you're saying. You're talking about something with the geometry looking uh, differently. So uh, it's not something that can be answered here in a stream. Let's see where R is at. Are you doing your uh, little tip trick that you did for the summit you're doing the yeah but I'm, I'm actually going a little bit further I, I did this I think in one of my streams but I'm, I'm using the different layers to actually choose parts of whatever I painted on so you know here I'm just erasing parts I don't want right um, and then I just bring on the other layer on top of it and uh, start kind of melding them together into what I want. So, uh, I mean, there's like some stuff on this one. I'll turn recording back on on it. Oops. So, yeah, I can just kind of go back and forth between, um, oops, let me start recording on it. So, I can erase some of the areas I don't want, right? And then uh, I just kind of bake them all together 
and get kind of the combination of, um, of some of the images that I blasted on here. So this takes a little bit of time, but uh, it saves a lot of time with sculpting because I can just pull off the relief from it and just use it as a uh, as a kind of sculpting base. And uh, you know, it takes care of a lot of the design work for me because it's just basically you know iterating and finding a, a good design and then just using that. Yeah, I love your technique. That like when you showed this, I was like, hey, that's really smart. Like just like throwing some textures on there. You know, I'd, really I'd like to take credit for it, but it's really kind of a combination of people have done this in the past. So Scott Robertson did it with Moto, where he basically blasted pictures onto a model. So that's where I kind of saw it first. And then I think I saw Justin Fields do it at a ZBrush uh, Summit one year. And then um, uh, I think uh, also Neville Page does it. So th there's a lot of artists that use this technique. It's, it's not mine in any way, shape, or form. But the thing is, with every new version of ZBrush, there's new features that can add more to it. So the um, mask changed points has uh, really done a lot of really cool stuff for this um, because it basically allows me to just basically, and I've stored it. You can see it here. I've stored a state. And then I can just uh, mask change points from that and then basically uh, do a little bit of an inflate. I've also stored a morph target and then just get some really cool uh, cool results from it. So yeah, thanks. Yeah, it's a cool way to work. Use that masking and let it uh, push for you. Yeah. It's not a bad idea, Jamie. Have a, a little ornament exchange. <laughs> Everyone sculpt a different Christmas ornament and share. Yeah, that's no, I, I like the idea of everything has to come from the dog leg, though. You like that? That's good. I like that. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> that would be good. <laughs> it's a good challenge. Yeah. It'd be a good Just challenge. Dog meat, dog meat ornaments. So we're looking at Steven. He's got that mustache and beard in now. And the hat starting to come together. Yeah. Nice. It's reminding me a little bit about the what are those things called where they're they're a character within a character within a character? The Russian oh, dolls. Mamushka. Dolls. Mamushka. Rushka. Right? Mamushka. I don't know. I don't know. Mamushka? That. Is that that, yeah. The, oh, this in Spanish. I don't know in English. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. It's like it's like it's like it's like matrimony. Not 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 matrimony. Like 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 uh, like motherhood. It's like like uh, matryoshka, something like that. I think. Uh, yeah, I think sounds in chat accurate. Here, thing, hey, looks like I got it right. Hey, it's matryoshka. Come on. Yeah, looks like you're good. And it reminded like me a little bit. Russian is limited to like four words, so it's like. <laughs> Madryoshka, Madryoshka in Russian, I think. But I, I don't know any Russian. Yeah, it's like I move around a lot when I'm trying to look in through and try to figure out like different shapes and flows and things. Coming together. We didn't, you guys all started, you know, relatively with very minimal item so i'll hail the sphere <laughs> the power of the sphere that's what i love <laughs> i mean zbrush for sketching is just so good man yeah it's good. poly box modeling poly modeling you used to have you know to have your templates everything to you have to know what you were doing right before you start zbrush ah, just changed my life we're looking at Same yours year. now, Franco. Same here. Look at mine. <laughs> That's a little funny guy. And this is where I, where, yeah, I was using that. And the, I, and it's the cloth stuff for this is really good. Like, that guy's awesome. I was using mm -hmm. the transpose for the hat. Uh, yeah, I just did this. <laughs> <laughs> I love his proportions. Oh, yeah. They're so good. <laughs> That's coming together nice. Put the voice for him. 
What was that shame? No, no, you're all watching. Yeah. I can't scold. Like, you gotta, you gotta <laughs> give him a voice. Oh. No, I cannot do voice. Come on, Sean, you have to do voice. <laughs> it was kind of gummy. Right? You're talking <laughs> kind of like this. Hello, guys. <laughs> there you go. There you go. How to make your gifts? <laughs> I don't buy it, I swear. I don't have teeth. I'll tell no, you. No teeth yet. No teeth yet. I have some tears. <laughs> oh, no. I'm scared of the tears. You go, boys and girls, if you know what to do. Oh, this. I leave my dentures in the bad kids' stockings. <laughs> it's really turning. It's really turning right now. He needs a whole series of animated shorts now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> A not so evil elf, but slightly. Uh, Marcin, he's good at then, heart. He just doesn't, you know. Yeah. <laughs> he's no any better. <laughs> uh, Marcin, uh, the deformer is working fine in Gizmos. Just make sure you ha don't have your focal shift turned up <clears throat> because then it will work differently in the patch that just came out. I might as well just show this because people. Here, I'm gonna I'm gonna show this quick, right? So what we added again to the patch that just came out yesterday is the deformers, right? So when you're using these, this is no normal movement of the deformer, okay? But now if you come up here and change your focal shift, it's not gonna work exactly the same. It's gonna work. It's now taking advantage of the gizmos' new ability to deform the mesh differently, right? So if I come out of this. It's taking advantage of, of this thing right now that if you change your focal shift, you can actually, in essence, use the gizmo itself as a deformer, right? And so you can see it's more of a local, localized deforming. So double check that because I don't have any problems with the deformers um, in this version. So I would double check and make sure what you're bringing up, uh, that your focal shift is actually sitting at a negative 100. So that it'll work the way it is on my screen. Okay, so it's, I would double check that. There are like that. two of those that that, are, that, are, that do that, right? Uh, that? The, there are two of the gizmos that do that, right? It's, it's not the standard one, but it's like the cloth one and the and the smart smart. Yeah, uh, all the well, any deformer that no. you any deformer that you're going to use now, right? Any one, any of the three that are okay. here by default. If you don't have the focal shift of negative one hundred, then yeah, it'll it'll use that. Okay. Okay. All of them. So, but they all they all sh they all should be deep. They're all defaulted to negative one hundred. So it's the same what you guys have been used to this whole time. So you would in essence you got to turn it on uh, yeah. in order to use it. Or some people have, I think started doing is saving out their own transpose with the focal shift of where they like it and making a fourth one as their own brush. Oh, that's a good idea. And then Marcy, make sure uh, you can't use the deformers on subdivision levels. So then make sure you're you're not you don't have subdivision levels. That might be your other thing. All right, just answering questions here. Okay, moving along, moving along. Let's see, Shane, where you're. Oh, you're writing now uh, some fingers. Is he gonna hold a sign? He's gonna hold. No, he's gonna hold a clump of burning sticks. Ah, yeah. <laughs> you know, Krampus. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He has no. to. He has to whack the kids. Keep the kids with the burning sticks. You, know. you have a voiceover for him. Sticks. What's that? Oh yeah. <laughs> I have to think about that one. <laughs> oh, God, this... oh, no, that's the other one. I got. Uh, yeah, I got those stuff. Oh, I got those stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I try, I'm trying to like get like a little bit of a lisp yeah, on there, but it's not working. <laughs> that one sounded like a buff Lilo. Or Stitch, rather. Stitch. Oh, yeah. oh, Stitch, yeah. Buff Stitch. My kids have recently gotten super into Lilo and Stitch. It's kind of fun. I love, uh, I love his designs. Um, Chris Sanders. Yeah, it's great. Mm -hmm. Super yeah. Corby. 
It's uh, a friend of mine, Mike Mike Morris. You probably know him. It's like uh, he was a um, artist on Simpsons for years. <clears throat> really nice guy. He was telling me how um, I was working on a little um, a little cat for of uh, Ogo, it's Chris Sanders' little cat that he made a comic book out of. Yeah, yeah, so I yeah, made yeah. him a little three D print like really fast in like the course of a weekend. I just sculpted it and printed it and gave it to him. And um, Mike came over and saw me working on it and gave me some great pointers about Chris's um, aesthetic. And he's like, think about it like sandbags think of the arms and the legs and everything as sandbags and they're filled with sand yeah. but gravity pulls the sand down to certain areas and that's how he drew stitch and then that helped me really kind of wrap my brain around how to make ogo because he has the same kind of chunky proportions like a like a chubby baby kind of you know mm. absolutely it's really cute because it's not um, normal like it's not your intuitive way to go typically it's like a different you know because it's like pulling weight in different areas <laughs> that you wouldn't think to so it makes it really cute <laughs> Chris is a pretty cool guy too. I met yeah, Chris is great. A couple of years ago at the Lightbox Expo, he was he was super kind. Yeah. Yeah, my kids went and drew drew him uh, like mermaids from the because I I had gotten them uh, a couple little things like as gifts from from their booth, and uh, my kids were so excited they went through and they 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 drew them you know and so we went ahead and we took them to the expo and. <laughs> And they gave them to to the Sanders and nice. and uh, and they gave my kids, you know, like they traded. They they bought the the drawings from my kids. That's <laughs> oh, awesome. way. That was nice. Yeah, that's great. So, so cool. Like, Pros. <laughs> Inspiring the yeah. younger generation. I went yeah, around great. with I went around with my daughter through that whole show. We were there for like three hours. And I was just letting her buy whatever she wanted on some of the artist booths to support the artists. And like she started we started doing a sticker. So she just started buying stickers and all the booths and bouncing around. It was fun. Nice. Okay, we'll go, we'll go to Ara real quick. See where you're at with yours. I miss expos, like the ZBrush Summit. I miss my uh, the, the physical being yeah. in person. Yeah. Oh, next year maybe. You don't know if you're coming back. There's no, there's some. Wait, who is there? Starting? Oh, Toy Fair is going to do it in person this this coming in February. Oh, yeah. New York. Yeah, designer con was in person too. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. It was. I just went to the LA Auto Show too. It's great. Hmm. Oh, you did. Yeah, uh, it's nice thanks. to see everybody in person. Slowly but surely, things are coming back. Yeah, slowly. So this was your uh, paint, and then you did a a mask, and then an inflate. Yeah, mask by mask change points, right? Yep. Yep. And then just an inflate. And I mean, this time the inflate worked right. Sometimes I, you know, I store a morph target too because sometimes the inflate is too harsh. But mm -hmm. this time around, it, it worked out really well. So <laughs> that's detail. so cool, man. <laughs> right? Like I'm, I've just got a figure like pretty much done. I can just, uh, and I can do like 10, 15 of these a day, and, uh, and then you know, I pick the one I like. A lot. Really, really, really so really spending cool. all the time uh, making a you know one per one thing, and then if it's not something that turns out well, then I'm basically stuck. And I can always go back to them too. Like I've got a library of them stored, so it's pretty it's pretty neat. Or kit bash ideas from other ones. Yeah. Um, Whisker King, you don't have to use Dynamesh. Just use Live Booleans. I don't ever use Dynamesh anymore to make water tight for 3D printing. I just use live booleans, and then you don't have to read Dynamesh and Dynamesh. Yeah, but if you that's oh, if you have to do the shell, you have to make it Dynamesh. You have to do what? The shell. If the shell. Yeah, be hollow. Shell. Yeah, if you want yeah. to hollow it out. Yeah, I normally what I normally do for that is I duplicate it, and then I drop the Dynamesh down so that the shell yeah. doesn't need to be super dense. I do. Yeah. And then I just still use live booleans because then I just yeah, yeah, yeah you subtract. Hustle. Yeah, or and then you can just merge it back down, and then you're fine. So to do the original merging, I don't use Dynamesh anymore. I just use live booleans and then do the shell. I duplicate it and then Dynamesh at a lower resolution, create the shell, get rid of the outer shell, and I've got the inner shell. And then just yeah. either merge it together or just live boolean it again. I've done the same thing with adaptive mesh. Yeah. Well, you just, yeah, and you can take it to G2 box and make it yeah. hollow. It, it does it in like one second. <laughs> yep. Yeah, with the drain holes and everything. Yeah. Mm. yeah, that's what I've been doing lately. What is it? What I'm looking for? <laughs> um, Whisker King. I know I showed this at some point. I don't. 
I don't know. Are you talking about the live Boolean part or are you talking about what we're talking about with the shelling? Uh, as we go on here, let's go to, who have we got? Ash, let's see where Ashley's at. Eh? Uh, yeah. A centipede snowman? Yes. That's the Ashley we know. There you go. <laughs> 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 I want to hug. I love that there's so many arms for hugging. The first set of arms are like, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> now I can picture that guy who plays the uh, the mayor in Gotham. What's his name? He he does like all those all those super like <laughs> I, I can't even, I can't even think. He's on a commercial recently that I heard too. Uh, oh shoot! But he's got like a super iconic voice. I can't think of who it is, like what his name is. I'd help you, but I have no idea. I didn't never watch the show. <laughs> oh, I, I liked it. I really enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> never watched it. I just think of him saying, hug me, Billy. I'm cold. <laughs> <laughs> That's very uh, scary. Hug me, Billy. No man to come up to it. Yeah. Just today's mood. Yeah. Like sculpting my feelings. So cold. Hold me. <laughs> I miss the cold. Do you though? Yeah. Do you? Yeah. Like yeah. actually? Yeah. Oh, like the fall. I miss the fall because it's, it's 80 degrees, 90 degrees here in LA lately. It's like ridiculous for November. I'm sweating right now. I'm yeah, sweating that's crazy. Right now. Uh, too warm. Too hot. Yeah. I'm lo well, you got you to look at it this way. I was out playing hockey like on the pond until like midnight like one of the, okay yeah care. fair i didn't fair, care fair, fair. it's, it's a requirement it's a requirement to be canadian you must be outside <laughs> in the cold at some point in time <laughs> yeah for like at least like 10 hours yeah. straight at some point you don't come back into the house until your cheeks are red and your nose are red and you can't feel your ears <laughs> and you can't feel your ear yes then you yeah. come into the house like it starts hurting because it's like so cold <laughs> it's getting minor frostbite this is looking. This is a great idea, actually. This is a good one too. That's a fun one. Well, thank you. Cool, cool. Let's see how Mr. Gremlin's coming along. Hey, there we go. Good <laughs> you getting there. Yes. Oh, that was good. Swing. Yeah. Very cool. Richard Kind. Hmm. Oh, that's the actor. Richard Kind. Yeah. Okay. Just bringing it back. I was like, wait. Oh, yes. And now, uh, Jim, he's talking about the TV show that was called Gotham. What was it on? Fox or something? Uh, I, I actually don't know. I, I saw it on Netflix. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. There's no more of that, right? What streaming service no. did you watch it on? Yeah. Who watches TV anymore? He's a funny actor. You guys ever see the movie Clifford? Oh, no, see, everyone says that, but it, no, it's the um, no, I mean, it's old school. It's Martin Short and Richard Kind is his dad. Martin Short plays a kid who's obsessed with dinosaurs, and uh, and then Richard or um, James Groden is it James Groden? What's his first the, the father, the actor who played the father in Beethoven? He's this uncle to to uh, Martin Short, and it's 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 a freaking hysterical movie because uh, Martin Short's obviously an adult boy, adult man who's acting like a boy who was portraying a kid and uh yeah it's uh, richard kind is his dad he gets so angry with his son and then he figures they can dump it on his brother because his brother owes him and uh yeah it's a great comedy you should watch it mid 90s if i yep. remember right yep. it's kind of like, like, step it's like a, a cult following what kind of like a step brothers i mean in the sense that Different, it's cool, cool one. It's different. It's Martin Short's kind of calm. It's his kind of humor. Okay. It's it's like if you like Martin yeah. Short and Steve Martin, you'll love it. If you don't, then it might just not be your cup of tea. But it's pretty. I think it's pretty funny in general. Like it's ridiculous. It's, it's, it's one absurd. of those fun, ridiculous movie where he's like a grown man acting like a four year old. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, I'm gonna take since he keeps asking about what we were talking about with printing and stuff so here i'm going to show this real quick um so as far as using live boolean so you don't you do not have to use dynamesh and i personally do not use dynamesh anymore to prep my prints 
The only part I do is what Franco was talking about. If I want to hollow it out and use ZBrush to do that, I can use Dynamesh to do that. Because I've got three printers myself right here in my little office. I know a bunch of people in here have their own printers as well. So now I just prefer using live booleans because then I can just click a button and then I have the result and now it's watertight. Um, so same thing, you gotta have overlapping, right? So if the, if the geometry is overlapping, then you're good to go. If the geometry is not overlapping, then it's just, it's gonna maintain the gaps just like Dynamesh would if you had the resolution high enough. So there's multiple ways to do this. Um, the fastest way I normally do for me is I make a folder so I'll have a folder of all the stuff that I'm ready to start prepping for print. And then I just use the folder and I go into the gear and then I just say Boolean folder. That's the best right? way. And that's it. And then this yeah. is going to go through and all the sub tools that are on, it's going to Boolean them, union them. It's going to do a union, which in essence, that's what you want, watertight union. And then your result will be down here. And then now this is a watertight union and that can be printed. It's watertight. Um, this mm. is one way. Another way would be if I, I'm just going to take the first two sub tools, I guess. Uh, now nah, we'll take. Here, let's take. Let's take this clothing. Okay. So another way would be is if you merge down your sub tools. I know Shane, you use this now a lot in your your pipeline, your workflow that you do with your blocking out. <clears throat> um, so if you guys want to see, Shane has a great example too of how he uses this even just do character development the way he does what I'm about to show you. So I don't know, if Shane, you want to mm -hmm. jump on this after I show this. Um, if you have a mesh with multiple meshes, in essence, there's multiple mesh shells there, you can still use Booleans on it without going to where I just did. Just turn on your gizmo and click on the gear and there's a remesh by union. Mm -hmm. So the reason I love that so much is that it only rebuilds the, the parts where the two meshes come together. Mm -hmm. um, it like Dynamesh will rebuild your entire mesh and it will get rid of um, colors and things like that sometimes and it, it, it will get rid of creases most of all it will just kind of uh, kind of water down your mesh unless you go really really high with the with the geometry so yeah remesh by union just stitches right where they collide and so yes. it will maintain all of your creases, everything else. And it's really cool. I like it a lot. Nice. Yeah, that's part of the, even the live Boolean code is it only changes geometry where stuff is intersecting. Can you show them how to hollow it? Yeah, so then what I do to hollow it, like say if I take this one, right? Because you're hollowing, no one's going to see it, right? You're just printing something to save material, make it lighter. Unless you're going the manufacturing route, right? Where you're doing something where it's like a product that's sitting on our desk. That's a different world. That's something else. But for the most part, like even me, I've done some stop motion animations where I've hollowed it out with ZBrush and then just glued all the pieces together and was fine and threw it on film, right? So for hollowing out, what I like to do, Frank, I'll do this, the live bullying part. And then I'm like, okay, this is my sculpt. I don't need to worry. I didn't lose any details. Whatever I sent it, it's what I'm getting. And then so what I normally do is I duplicate this. So then I have a version like this, and then this version, I'll Dynamesh, right? And then now, obviously, with the new version that we have in 2022 for Dynamesh, we all can now grab the resolution slider and just hover over where we like the density already on the mesh, and the resolution slider is actually going to change. So everyone thanks Shane. I like this it. Is, thank you, Shane. This is a Shane. <laughs> this is a thank you, Shane. Shane. Yeah, that's a good one. Thank you, Shane. <laughs> Don't, gush, Don't be Thanks. so excited, Stephen, about it, okay? Thank you. Okay. Okay. So then what I do is I Dynamesh it, right? And I, I just Dynamesh enough that it's pretty much maintaining the main form. And then now I'll do, uh, Frank, what you said. I'll grab like an insert mesh brush. It doesn't matter. It's irrelevant what it is. Yeah. Right? And then hold the Alt key, right, when you go to drag it out so that you can do that. All right, hold on, Mike. Just turned off Dynamesh. Turn Dynamesh back on. Okay, and then just drag it out and then just move it off the surface like that. So then it's not part of the equation, right? Clear mass and hit create shell, right? And then what this is going to do is I'm going to have an inner shell, right? I'll have this and then an inner shell. And then I get rid of the outer shell is what I do. So I just... And left. then you... Yeah, then you combine them and you have to yeah. make a, a, a way out. You can say, yeah. 
then you can bind them and just export it. Or, you know, sometimes, you know, you got to cut them in half and stuff. So you throw like another object in there and use live booleans again. And then you can. Yeah, yeah I know. Thickness. Yeah. That's what I personally do. I'm not giving the saying this is what everyone should do, but that's personally what I do now to go through the the process, that process. Yeah. To do that. Yeah. I, I just find live booleans is a quick way to do it to get everything union and ready to go to print. And then you're. Yeah. Good. The shell process yeah, the, the shell process takes a long time. Like yeah. I was doing a, a live what, explaining all these like three different methods, and just the shell took like fifteen minutes just to make the shell. Yeah, yeah, that's why I go lower because then it won't take so long to make the shell either. Oh, yeah, but if you're doing it in the like the the same mesh and everything, like how it yeah. was originally yeah. made. Yeah. So there you go. So what's Whisker King, you were asking. There you go. That's that's my process now. But like everyone's got a different process. That's the beauty, I think, of ZBrush too. Is there's different processes out there that you guys all can do. All right, let's continue moving on. Let's see where everybody's at. Well, Franco, let's come back to you since uh, I'm intrigued to see where you're. I'm not doing too much. Uh, I just I started to detail it a little bit because I'm kind of like I was paying attention to what everybody was doing. So. Yeah. yeah, that's the hard part. <laughs> like, oh, right? Right. Yeah, you get you get in like a you get in like a daze, even though it's a little screen. You're watching it, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just playing. Just like, okay. ooh, <laughs> it's gonna be nice. That's a cool piece. I was trying right. to figure out what to use from the new stuff, but. Paul, can I ask you for a live tutorial here? Okay. Because <laughs> this is like, I think I know what to do, but I'm sure you'll tell me exactly how to do it correctly. Uh, I want to make this a, a little festive cornucopia hat. As we know, okay. cornucopias have a little bit of a curve. So I could just do like, you know, go in here and do, I guess, bend curve. But I'm guessing there's probably a better way to utilize it so I can curve it, but also twist it. So that it kind of flows the way I want. You could use the new Gizmo ability to curl it, right? Because it's local. It's a local now. Okay. So you can use rotational would be a way to go about it. Okay. Um, but the bend curve would probably, if you're going to go deformer in the Gizmo, would probably be the best one to go with. Okay. Because then you can move that along all axes and you can right. start having that. That's what I thought. I can add those points, yeah. But yeah, how, how about then, the new method? Because I've seen you do it, but I don't I don't have it in my brain. Yeah, so, so if you... How, how uh, do you do the new one just to show it? So you you just put wherever you want the gizmo to kind of start deforming, right? So look at it as a local deformation, right? Like if your finger is going to grab that point and start rotating. Okay. okay? Yeah. And then yeah. your focal shift is controlling how strong that's going to be. So okay. if you put it higher, let's say you put it like in the 80s or like 90 then you're only going to start, and if you start rotating, you're only going to start rotating the little tip of that cornucopia. Okay. Right. So the higher you go, then the more local it's going to be to okay. the center point of that gizmo. The okay. lower you put it, then the more it's going to affect the entire mesh. Okay. Uh, so if you just put it a little bit, I don't put, I'd probably put it more to like down further and then do a rotation now instead. Like, so if you want to start having it turn just like that and then do the other ones now the other way there you go and then of course you can mask and respect your masking as right. well right, so right? and then blur your mask and yeah. you can do all that if you want to as well poop emoji yeah. right. interesting so this is this will start allowing you to start deforming the mesh in that sense as well manual way okay interesting yeah right. then adjust your focal shift so then you can have different different control so I would probably, for what you're doing, I'd probably go lower, actually, not higher. Yeah. I'd probably go a lot lower. Like, go below zero. Go like negative. Be in the negatives. Be in the negatives. So you can really start to really, you want a, you want a pretty big turn, right? Yeah, for the whole thing, I think. And then it would just yeah. do minor ones. So Yeah, so if you want, like, a big, big, big turn, then you go lower. And then if you want a larger, and you want, a, like, smaller turns, more localized, then you have your slider above zero. And go higher. Okay. But some yeah, like Ben Curve would probably be better for this. Yeah, I would I use Ben that. Curve for this because yeah. it's just going to be a smoother process, just grabbing the points. And then 
yeah. each point in the bend curve also has rotational ability and scalability as well right and pinching ability for that matter right um and then now the new it, it wasn't improved but we did do as to a request uh the bend curve now we'll actually see what part is the taller part and automatically set the correct xyz axis points so this was set the previous z brush you would have had to have changed your cone mm. to be do you need it along the y the x or the z now mm. ZBrush looks and sees what is the longest portion of the model and automatically Ooh. sets your cone to that point that's awesome fancy so, yeah that's it's exciting it's something <laughs> small but it was, a, it was a request and so it makes it made sense so yeah that's yeah, great. This is this is the route I would probably go more. Yeah. More like what you're doing, and then because then you can pinch and change the size as well. Yeah. Cool. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Love it. Me, what what did you start with to make this? Did you start with just the the helix? Uh, actually, no. I started with just a cone, just regular cone. Then I just added, uh, went to you know, um, initialize, added more, yeah, uh, edge loops, and then. To see, we meshed it and just sure. started, and then just subdivided and just started messing with it here. Yeah, it sculpted in the curve. I actually sculpted in the spiral just by hand because I figured it'd give it a little bit more natural right. look. Yeah, yeah, I think you probably my mind's going straight to the helix. I think you might be able to could have done that and just inflate with it. The helix itself, yeah, yeah. Now that I'm now looking at what you're doing, my mind, and this is part of what I end up doing. I start going off and think, hmm, what would be another. And for everybody, watch. This is how I've learned ZBrush myself, like mm. experimenting and trying things out. Totally. Same. Yeah. Same. Yeah. Like I thought, there's much tutorials back in the day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that was the thing that was great. That's been great about ZBrush in a lot of ways. Is once you understand the rules of ZBrush, like there's a steep learning curve, I think, in the beginning. But once you get over that hump, then it becomes a lot like when I was a teenager messing around with Photoshop, it, you you know the rules. So then you start combining things and experimenting and you feel comfortable to, in like a sandbox to start pushing the boundaries more. But there's a certain point where you're still new, so you don't know, you're afraid to, you're more afraid to make mistakes or screw something up even though you won't, what did you really mess up? But it's, um, yeah, once you reach a certain point, then you just, you just, you're swimming. You just get to figure out what you want to do, which is great. Yeah. It would have worked. The yeah. first ZBrush tutorial I watched was Meets Myers. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Meets. The alien one? Yeah. Yeah, me too. I, I still ones. have those on DVD, both of them. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I got them somewhere on my shelf. Back in the day. Yeah. That awesome. Meets, that Meets stuff is incredible. Yeah. Does anybody follow him on Instagram? Like his setup, his whole oh, room, yeah. his like, living room yeah. is awesome. Yeah. yeah. I love it. <laughs> Well, I used to share studio space with Meats. Oh, no way. Oh, really? Right. Whoa. Wow. When we were both airbrushers, we were airbrush artists. And uh, mm. before, before we got into 3D. Like painting cars and stuff like that? Yeah, painting. Yeah, airbrush. He would he would airbrush um, like, like just like on canvas and stuff. And I would airbrush on cars and motorcycles and, you know, when it was bef before it was stupid. <laughs> so 90s. Yeah. 90s. 90s. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Sorry to all the airbrush artists out there who are like, hey. Uh, yeah, hey. yeah. I mean, it's when it was when it was still pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Still, what was the name of the show? Cool. There was a show about that, yeah. Oh, uh, that did airbrushing? Or oh, that's just customized cards like crazy. Pit my ride. Like Oh, there's yeah, the yeah. well. There's the no. one in Vegas. The, that's, uh, the original one. There was a uh, uh, right. counts 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 whatever. No, so there's no. that one. They're always airbrushing everything on like motorcycles and cars, which is cool. It's an art form for sure. That's yeah. I used I used to go to car shows and airbrush T-shirts and leather jackets and that kind of stuff. Nice. <laughs> I want to do that. What's that? I wanted to do that for some time. Yeah, when I was young. Yeah, you did, Franco. You did the same thing. No, 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 I didn't. I never got to do it, but it's uh, something I really I wanted, wanted to do. But this, I didn't meet anybody with uh, any skills uh, with airbrush, uh, so with, there wasn't any way to learn back there. At home. I have a. I should go snag my. Um, I have my one of my old snowboards that I airbrushed. I can go grab it and show you guys if you want to see it. 
Yeah, oh, that's super rabbit. cool. Yeah. Just don't just don't trip over your Christmas lights and the Christmas tree in the fire. Like, <laughs> I'm gonna run out of my like, <laughs> yeah, go go grab it. Why not? Right, I'll be right back. We're looking at Steven's screen right now for his Santa. Oh, hello. Nice. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. He's cute. Coming together nicely. The oh, totally yeah. could be an ornament. Hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. yeah, that's printed. Yeah. yeah. And that's, that's the idea. I mean, I want to, you know, in the end, I want to have, you know, some, you know, consideration for draft angles and things like that. And I've got a ways to go. I mean, there's some things like some, some overhangs down here and things like uh -huh. that, that I need to take care of eventually, but uh, that'll be simple enough. I can just add in a sphere and just kind of like <laughs> fill that space in. <laughs> um, I got to add in his, so uh, cute. his legs. Kind Dude, I love I love how you do cheeks. They're so adorable. <laughs> They're so like I just want to like like grab them like full fistfuls, not pinch, like full fist grab the cheeks. <laughs> he was, yeah, he looks awesome. It's awesome. A little bit rosier. There did you get your board? I did. You okay, it? hold on. Let me let's make your webcam well, the, the bigger item. I got my lights shining, and this is super shiny. Uh, there you go. Oh, it's like wow. Here, let me turn off my green screen for just a second. Let's turn, turn off the festivities one, behind you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> festivities. Let me turn off the stupid. <laughs> I like it. Listen, people, you could see my uh my house, okay? You could okay. see it from space. I'm Clark Griswolding. Oh. <laughs> oh, there we go. That's yeah. so cool. Nice. nice. Awesome. Yeah, this is an old Sims half pipe. Oh, sorry. It's an old Sims board. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. Awesome. That's, that's really that's cool. actually so cool. And you know no one else would have anything like that on the slopes. Yeah. Absolutely true. It's so cool. All right. Festivities coming back. <laughs> back to the festivities. <laughs> yes. Okay, let's let's see how how the gremlins go on. Going, Very going, fun. coming together. Gremlin fun. Oh, it's hard to recreate something. Horrible. Yeah, it's always fun to work on something like from your like your childhood or something like that that affected you where you're at today. In essence, artistically, especially. I know I had fun when I did mine. It was a it was a lot yeah. of fun. I'm curious how uh, my kids would like uh, the movie. <laughs> How old yeah, are your kids? I think they're too young still. They're six and three year olds. Oh, yeah. Oh, I watched it when I was six. I loved it. You did? You watched coolest... it when you were six? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Young. Yeah. Wow. That's wow. I mean, I watched, I, it too. <laughs> I watched a lot of like messed up stuff when I was young, though. So <laughs> the first, one, first one or the second one? The first one? Uh, Do you I'm remember not that? Sure. I, I kind of, I, th I think I remember watching all of the Gremlin because like my, my dad would like, just kind of be like, hey, look, look at all these cool movies. You want to see, like watch them? You're bored, right? And it's like, <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of kind of bored of watching Tarzan for like the seventh time in a row. So like, <laughs> show me something good. <laughs> something. Yeah. Tarzan. And you got, you got hooked after that. Yeah. I, don't, I think I, I saw the second one first. You saw the second one first. Oh, OK. Yeah, I think I saw the second one first. <laughs> I don't like the second one. As well, I mean, I, what I like about the second one is all the variation of the Gremlins. Yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, you you get all the weird ones as well. I, love, I don't like. Listen, the, the second one has its debates, but I like the second one with all the yeah, different like, Gremlins. It's fun. Yeah, having all the, yeah I yeah. actually like having all the different Gremlins. Too. That part is interesting. It's, it's just the yeah. the storyline is like it's just the first one. I, I love the first one originally more, but, but right. yeah, I like the diversity yeah, of the creatures too because the designs are so much fun. And, the, and so, the second yeah. one had the flying one, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was bat. obsessed yeah. with that one. I was absolutely yeah. obsessed with that. <laughs> Yeah. I love the arachnid one because of all the spikes and just the really yes. like, sharp <laughs> design. It looks evil, but I like, awesome. Yeah. I like the vegetable one. It's funny just seeing the vegetable <laughs> yeah. There you go. The yeah, it's super cool. And I'm, not, I'm not sure if you haven't seen it in a while, but man, it's, it's so meta. I mean, the, the way they they do the whole movie. And uh, it's in the second one, this, the time that Hulk Hogan appears. Really? In the movie, it just gets fucked up. Yeah. What? Yep. Sorry. Yep. Oops. Yep. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I love both. Like first one and second one. Yeah. 
can't go wrong with them. All right, let's see. Let's move on and see how uh, Ara, how you're coming along. Oh, nice. Sweet. A little bit of class simulation. Mm hmm. Oh, now you're copying me. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? You're inspiring no, him, Franco. Inspiring him. <laughs> Just Cease and desist. <laughs> right now. Do you guys all do like he does? Works in a single plane when you're doing cloth? Yes. Do you guys? Are you? Yeah. 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 Except for I think it's a good question. I get asked no. that a lot. So, and I think that's where the dynamic thickness now is just so huge. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, I I work on a single plane too when I'm doing cloth. cloth. Just makes sense to do it. I don't want to deal with all that extra. Why would yeah. you want to deal with the extra? You just on the possibility the for intersections too. That's the hard yeah. part. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. I you wrong. just add thickness after you're done, and then you're good to go. Yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. But so many people starting out don't think that way because they think, oh, I have to have it all ready from the beginning. But, yeah. Yeah. It's a process. Wrestling both sides, no thanks. Yeah, both sides and keeping that uh, thickness maintained is hard when you're trying to do that. Yeah. Nigh impossible. Still, I'm like barely learning uh, Marvelous Designer. Nice. Still need to uh, still need to get back on that horse. I mean, I kind of know it, but not not completely. I need to just get serious. Oh, it's about a cool it. software. Yeah, yeah. No, it's it's like I've had friends help me make something in there, and then they export it out for me, and then I bring in the ZBrush and keep working with it. It's great. So yeah, I started trying to learn it when I was working in games, and then I, <laughs> and I just I, I I wasn't using it long enough to really be able to grasp it. So. I think arguably with Marvelous, it's like you need to know sewing patterns and how sewing works more so than the actual program. Totally. Because like yeah. if you like figure that out and you just got like your sewing patterns in front of you, you can kind of make it work, I find. Yeah. yeah. We, we My mom a, was always doing stuff. And so like I, I've seen, like I've grown up seeing sewing patterns and I understand how they work and everything. Yeah. It's just the software. I just didn't get the time to. <laughs> to into. Oh, fair, fair. <laughs> it's an amazing though. It's like we... um. I was with Digital Domain earlier this year, and, and we had a uh, costume designer. Just want to remind you guys, we are on oh. a, a Seabrush stream. <laughs> was, we are uh, all praising like marvelous. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's like a reverse UV yeah. almost. Yeah, 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 yeah. A lot, a lot like that. Marvelous does go hand in hand with Zbrush, though. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's good. Like they do different things. It's a good. Um... <laughs> A good sister. I thought you were talking to your kids at first. <laughs> the dad voice. I was like, who is this? The dad voice kicking. Oh my God, I'm getting in trouble. Yeah. yeah. Like, what, did like, what did I do? Yeah. What did I do? <laughs> oh, I love it. I don't know why the poly group keeps turning red. So he looks he looks like Red Riding Hood. So I need to. <laughs> <laughs> Purple. There you go. They're trying to give you, it's giving you a sign. I know. Giving you a sign, right? Um, another question came up. Do you, I don't know if you guys want me to answer this, but I can uh, about a miniature uh, artist. Um, looks like he's using a preset base mesh to set his size in 3D print hub and then exporting. You actually don't need to do that. Um, there is a way to measure in ZBrush, measure the size, measure thicknesses and everything inside of ZBrush. There is a way to do it. Yeah. So um, With the scale master. Yeah, you use Scale Master instead of the preview. Okay, so the big difference, the only reason I'm, I'm jumping in on this, those are two different plugins. They're going to do completely two different things. So the 3D Print Hub is just about only exporting. Whereas mm -hmm. if you have a model and whatever size that it doesn't matter, the plugin then looks at the size that you've set in the hub, and then that's the size it exports, and then exports all mm -hmm. the sub tools individually if you want, and does many other things. The 3D, the uh, Scale Master is about setting the size inside of ZBrush's world. And so like what you would do in other programs where like, am I in inches? I'm in millimeters. Am I in centimeters? What world are you in? And then when you do that, we also will set other things so you can actually do measurements. So I guess, I guess I'll show it again. Sorry. I keep taking over the stream. Sorry, everybody. Do so it. Your, I can mini summon. Okay, so if you're doing a scale master, right? So as an example, you're doing a miniature, right? So you're doing whatever, like 50 millimeter, 10, 25 millimeter, whatever millimeter. Number one, what I like to do as well is I like to create a bounding box 
and the bounding box is just automatically almost like a packaging which by the way zbrush is being used a lot for packaging now too um so it's creating a box that's perfectly going to fit to every vertex point along the x y and z right so it's not going to be any bigger than that so in essence i can find i have no idea in this case what the size of this model is so I can do a bounding box, but I don't have to do the bounding box. There's a reason why I like to do the bounding box, and I'll show you in a second. Because um, as a toy maker, I get things all the time, measurements, you know, 50 millimeter by 20 millimeter by 16 millimeter, whatever, right? So I'll use a bounding box for that. So now that I have this, by ZBrush's really default world really is millimeters. Okay, so we're looking at millimeters per se is what the default. So this plugin is going to allow you guys to switch the millimeters centimeters inches and feet but get actual measurements so what you do is just like in 3d print hub you hit set scene scale and now we're getting the measurements and this is why there is only one measurement in millimeters because zbrush's default world is actually millimeters okay so there's no math to be done here so when you guys have models and in most programs unless you're going to use the new format made specifically for 3d printing which zbrush does have by the way that actually has not just the numbers like 5.44791 and 145. Uh, 3D or... 3DM. I always forget the name. Hold on, let me. 3MF. 3DMF. 3DMF. I want to say. So you guys yeah. have that? Yeah, yeah 3MF right here. I was ask you that. Awesome. Yeah, this is the only format, one of the only formats that actually will have is the mesh in a millimeter, centimeter, inch world scale. Most like OBJ doesn't have that. It's STLs don't have that. FBX. That's, that's why you have to go in your programs and set what world scale are you working in, and then you're fine, right? So the, a lot of the formats don't have that in it, it's right? So what master. you're doing in, in, in for essence, in scub, uh, scale masters, you're setting the world. So I'm saying, hey, this character is actually inches. Then I would say, hey, he's actually 7.91 inches tall, not 7.91 millimeters tall, right? Or is that in centimeters or feet? Like he's massive then in feet. So then one minute I click this feet, this inches, I mean, then you can see the slider will update. It goes to the inch world scale. And then now, not only that, but if you start using this transpose line, all these hashes are is a ruler, in essence, a measuring stick. So every major marker is an, is one inch. So from here to here is an inch, from here to here is an inch, and so forth. And then all the little ones, in this case, are a quarter inch right now. So I can actually go and say, well, how big is this finger going to be in inches? I can just click on a vertex point and go to the end. And in the top left, we'll give you 0.3784 inches. So that's how long that finger is in the world of inches. So now this is in the world of inches in per se, right? So now you can even, you can even export from here as well. You don't even have to use 3D Print Hub if you don't want to. But if you're going to switch to 3D Print Hub after this, you need to make sure because this is a different plugin. They're not they're not connected. They're plugins, right? So you got to make sure you come here and hit Update Size Ratio, right, and then grab the right one for this plugin before you export, and then that's it. You don't actually have to bring in any kind of model marker or anything like that. Scale Master is about getting the sizing right. So for you, that's a miniature sculptor. You'd bring in your model. You know what size that's supposed to be, 70 millimeter, 50 millimeter, whatever one inch that you're working, millimeter you're working in for whatever miniatures you're working on, and then just set it with this, and then, then you'll have a measurement. And then back to the bounding box, what's nice about this, and then for me, especially for obviously that gremlin behind me, like I've made multiple versions of it. I've made a, a 12 inch, a 24 inch, and then like a four inch. I didn't do anything, but inside of ZBrush. I didn't like re-sculpt it, right? That's the beauty of us being in digital. Um, so now with the bounding box, right, you're going to hit slider, subtool update, and then it'll update the sliders. And then if you change your mind and go, hey, he can't be total eight inches. He's actually, we're cutting him down for production. He's going down to four inches. Everything updates. And then they've got a resize subtool with an all. And I'm going to have all on and just hit resize and it resizes everything back. And every single sub tool is staying proportionately, resizing down. And then I'm just using the bounding box to do the quick resize. You don't have to use the bounding box. I just like to use the bounding box. It's a personal preference. And there you go. Now this guy's four inches instead of eight inches. Total. 
there you go. Quick and quick and simple, I hope. Amazing. Yeah, I mean, that's that's one that I'll have to go through and rewatch because I really like how how clean your little process was right there. That's nice. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just it just works. Like, you know, for me doing toys, I I get a lot of, yeah, hey, here's the size, but then the production changes. Like, hey, we gotta make this toy smaller now. It's not gonna be so big. And then this is all I do to change the size and then export and I'm done. I'm like, oh, that's going to take me a day or two. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Bounce around getting off me. Let's go back to uh, oh, chains on the snowman. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. Are they tire chains? No. <laughs> chains are required. That'd be funny. It's coming together, Ashley. I love it. It's great. Awesome. <laughs> Uh, thank you. Thank you. Everything looks better when you just throw chains all over it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like edge, mm -hmm. edge Lord Santa mm -hmm. or uh, Snowman. That's what I did with my Krampus last year. Is I threw chains all over it. You said Krampus. <laughs> you said Krampus. You said Krampus. Krampus. I caught it. You said Krampus. I don't really know. So I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to push one way I, that's right. it's so one of those debatable things it could be crumpus or krampus it's krampus Kramp. i don't know <laughs> yeah i go for I krampus. really bad krampus nice going to, well wait we got an apple going on over i gotta see what's going on with this apple is that an apple are you doing an apple daniel right now is that what that is oh no yes yeah yeah okay gobble gobble Looks like an apple. Oh my god. <laughs> Just a little turn. You could be your centerpiece for Thanksgiving. Have you ever made this made me think? Have you ever tried doing sculpting with um Rice Krispies? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Only in yeah. cube. No way. Do it. Yeah, I, it. I did it because of what we do, right? My mother-in-law is like, Paul, we're gonna make like a fun turkey. Out of rice crispy, I need you to sculpt a turkey out of rice crispy. I'm like, what? I'm like, all right, let's go for it. It was, it was interesting. And we had like M and M's pouring out of it and stuff. You know, had a little more fun on that. So awesome. it just made me think of it because it just totally had me one of those flashback things for me. <laughs> Love flashback things. Sculpt a turkey. And I just was seeing if anybody else has tried sculpting with something weird like that. All right. Yeah, rice rice krispies. Uh, sculpting with like dough before you make bread as oh, well. Yeah. Just anything that you can mold and your hands are on it, it's happening. Yep. He rolls. Mashed potato. A what? Yes. A burrito? A burrito? A what? Oh, a ma mashed potatoes. Oh, a mashed potato. Oh, yeah. Do yeah. fun fact: if you blend uh, mashed potatoes like crazy, it becomes like really like gummy almost, and it's got like this really fun texture, but it's not fun to eat. <laughs> I want, now I want to know how you discovered this. You just blend the potatoes too long. Plain That's how. Food. That's oh, okay. how. Yeah. Bad cook. It's also, together. being a bad cook. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I leave the cooking to my wife. I don't know. I don't have the patience. I don't have the patience to cook. I don't have. Come on. Yeah. 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 Takes Stop. time, but you you have to enjoy the time. Yeah, I grill. I'll grill, but I don't. Otherwise, oh, yeah. I'm like. Although I've had fun baking with my daughter and making ice cream and stuff, I'll do that. And I was trying to do that to teach her measurements and math and stuff. <laughs> See, like, other purpose. Let's, let, let's make something you eat, and then you got to learn measurements to make it. Yeah. We're looking at Franco's screen right now, it's coming into like present edition. A little more dynamics on the present too. I'm assuming you did, yeah. To make the present squash, so, yeah. Nice. Yeah. So some with the transpose cloth, something like that. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, it's simple. Get her done. Yeah, it's super useful. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He looks like he needs some water. <laughs> He's dehydrated. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> The stuff of nightmares was right. I need to go. 
coming together. I love it. These are this is I'm telling you, this is fun. I like that you guys wanted to do this again. It's all fun seeing nice. where you're all going with this. All right, let's come back to Shane and his speaking of Krampus. I just realized my mic was muted that whole time. Dang it. <laughs> Your mic was what? Muted. When you were talking about the Apple, I was talking back, but obviously it was muted. I didn't realize. Uh, <laughs> sign language. Yep. Oh, I, ran into, I ran into a man at uh, Target the other day, and I was trying to ask him for, for help. He's he an associate, and I didn't realize that he didn't speak. He was mute, and, and I was like... I was like, oh my gosh. And so I had to like whip out like my finger spelling days, you know? <laughs> oh yeah. I can't do that. Anymore. I used to have the whole alphabet. I can't do it. Yeah. My mom used to be an interpreter. So like, I know, I know some things, but then it was like, I, I, oh. I totally mixed up my R and my S and I was like, good grief. I was like, I felt stupid. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you don't use it every day, it's kind of hard though to keep all that. Yeah. Yeah, I was just gonna say at least you know some of it. Like yeah, it's ugly. <laughs> I wasn't gonna say the same. Yeah, like <laughs> I got no idea how to communicate with. Like, like I would just be profusely apologizing, being like, I don't know what to do. I would have just yeah, I probably would have just phoned notes and typed it out on the notes and showed the screen. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, oh, I don't know. It's the modern version of finger speaking. <laughs> finger <laughs> speaking. <laughs> it, it is still spelling with the fingers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Looking good. They're coming in. These are fun. Nice, Shane. Nice. Thanks. Making what do you stitches. add in there? What is that? Stitches. Is that... I'm just going to do some by hand just to stitch this. Ar ah, the, the stitch? Yeah, just to stitch the sleeve. Hmm. Nice. Where the heck did it go? Get back here. There we go. <laughs> Put a little stitching in there. I like that. Yeah, I mean, normally I'd use a stitch brush, but there's only like four of them, so... They're big, you know. Stitches. Hi, Ian. Welcome to the stream. Hey, what's up, Ian? Hi, Ian. Ian's one of our streamers on ZBrush Live as well, along with everyone you guys are watching here. Doing that old school way of working. Stitch one stitch at a time. One stitch at a time. Like sands of the hourglass. <laughs> okay. These are the days of our lives. <laughs> Whoever came with a phrase, it's great. Mm -hmm. Let's see how Andre is doing on the gremlin. Are you uh are you hoping to, are you gonna color him too? Oh look look at that. Look at that timing. Done. <laughs> Done. <laughs> Going right into coloring. Yeah, maybe some basic color. Just... Coloring is still, I think, mean, texturing and just pan painting is a, that's something I need to work on, I think, for me. Oh, okay. yeah. That's something that I'm starting to do with one of my pieces right now. Not yeah. like not, not I'm working on like the second, but you know. Speaking of hand painting, have you guys seen Arcane? That's exactly oh, what I mean. I need to. Uh, no no spoilers. I haven't seen the last two episodes. I haven't, I've only watched the first episode. It's so good. Oh my god. What's you? Yeah. I think. I saw someone on, on Facebook, some other artist was saying that uh, it reminded them of like just the iconic shots were a lot like Prince of Egypt. Like they were saying they hadn't seen an animated oh, film with those unique in takes. In some ways, yeah. That movie. yeah. Is that true? I haven't seen it yet. But you have, yeah, yeah I mean, it, the art is really good, but the story is it, also really good. So that's why oh, it's, it's going so well, I think. Yes. Definitely watch it. Getting some paint going there. Wait, what's what are what are you doing here? Wait, what what is this? Oh, wow. ooh, fancy! <laughs> oh, nice. Let's take it from the desolation, right? Yeah. So uh, it's Wait, how do how did you extract the edges? Like. Okay, so the first thing I do uh, is um, here. I'll duplicate this to another one. Um, the only thing is, it took a while, so I just kind of preface that. But basically, the first thing I do, and I, I won't do the thing that took a while. First thing I do is I do an inset border yeah, only, okay. yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, inset each poly right, and then you just kind of go, oops, what? 
Come on. Yeah, gray and it's okay. Yeah, like that, right? Nice. And then you basically awesome. get that, and then you just Q mesh the thing out, and then that's it. Perfect. Yeah, just to do that. Oh. 3ds Max. Nice. Hmm. Right, and the thing has an inside and an outside, so it created something really cool. So I might not even include that inside part and just kind of have it be like some sort of a scary helmet he's got on. That's cool. It's very, uh, it's you can your eye gets carried to that part. It's sure. very three D printable. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> I like that it's triangulated too. It makes me think of um, Deus Ex, um, Human Revolution, or uh, yeah. Yeah, those, those two games. Oh my god, the design of those games was freaking incredible. It's just so much beautiful design. It's all the motif of triangles, gold and black. It's just awesome. Yeah, yeah so well done. In Montreal, mm -hmm. you play the game? Oh yeah, both of them, multiple, <laughs> multiple <laughs> times. So good. I wish they would make a third one because it feels like it sort of needs one. But I think that there's whatever changes in companies. All right, can you show it again really quick? Someone just joined the stream and is like, wait, how did you do that? Can you show it again real quick, please? Sure. So, uh, yeah, you just start out with like something like this, for example. And uh, Z modeler, inset, right? All polygons, border only, and inset each poly, right? And you just go like that. And you can choose a thickness. And also, um, and then you just Q mesh it out to get the, uh, you know, to get it to be thick. Or you can also do dynamic. Um, oh, uh, I should mention this too. Let That's me really do cool this. Too. Let me just fix the thing. Yeah, and I'll, yeah, I should I should mention this too. Let me fix this real quick. Geometry mesh integrity fix mesh. Okay, cool. So the other thing is, if you do dynamic, you get this kind of. Uh, uh, arc thing and also you can like use q grid to like go everywhere in between so you can get like you know so many different kind of variations of, of this um but if you do dynamic and don't do smooth and do thickness that kind of does this too which might be a better way to go than using uh using q mesh uh, but yeah so i've kind of <laughs> interestingly enough i've made a whole kind of thing out of this i've, I've been doing this for a while and uh, let me just go to my website here and uh, go to abstract. So I've done all these like spheres of influence using that exact same technique. Oops. Nice. So cool. That's stellar. I love the so fractal cool. stuff. Yeah. Uh, well, the, the fractal stuff is done in a completely other thing where it, it's it's uh, it's a uh, it's a whole other kind of mental journey that you have to be on to be able to do those things. Um, and you, you know, if you guys think ZBrush is hard, try doing fractals. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's really cool, kind of. You know, like, I mean, I've got a whole other kind of um, look to this thing now. Um, and now there's two of them, two cages. But yeah, um, it's a, it's a nice and easy way to kind of get a, a kind of scaffolding. And the lower res it is, the better it is. I mean, this is a little bit too high res. Uh, I would probably decimate this a little bit more. To get um, you know to get to get less geometry, but now I've got two of them. That even makes it even more noisy. But like, let's see which one I'd choose better. Uh, I think I like this one a little bit more, so I'm going to stay with that one. Um, and then I've got the the, the cage underneath, uh, just kind of giving it some extra. Oomph. Yeah. So Scrooge is going to definitely uh, be worried about his future and do good things. So even though this is dark, it's really not dark because it, it fixes uh, Scrooge's attitude towards um, his workers. And life in general. It's cool. Why is everybody so quiet? <laughs> we're watching you work. We were amazed. Yeah, we're just, yeah. We're so we're just kinda... We were blown away. You, yeah. touch, you touched our hearts. It's it's <laughs> it's good. All I want to do. Good technique. Yeah, really yeah. cool. When you did the uh, more organic shape, it looked a lot like coral, too. So you could have all kinds of yeah. really, you go from like very hard surface to very organic with their just different options you're choosing. It's really cool. And you can still sculpt on it, too. Like I'm still sculpting on this. That's what's really cool. And it's very low poly. So it's not like it's going to really tax your system. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I had to switch to Ashley's because she's just she's taking it a whole another level. 
Oh, it's just a cute cup of um, hot chocolate, I guess. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. Forget it's about like yellow. No. Forget hey, about yellow. Billy. Brown. Hey, no. <laughs> hey, Billy. It's chocolate, people. It's chocolate. Get your mind out of the gutter. Oh, chili. Chili's the oh, I was thinking it was blood. I yeah. wasn't thinking gutter stuff. I was thinking blood. I was thinking blood, I was thinking yeah. blood too. But it's brown, isn't it? It's more brownish. Yeah, no, it's, it's definitely red. brown. Yeah. This yeah. is brown. I think that you're just colorblind. Blood when it uh, dries, it gets brown. So yeah. Just, yeah, that's true. Yeah. When it dries. Yeah. yeah, it's it's more brown. It's the mono. Yes. One hundred percent. But I did take it as blood. <laughs> Poor Billy. This, did you use the splatter brush for that, or you just? Did yeah, a, yeah, 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 yeah. I use a splatter yeah. brush, and another th thing too that I like to do with the splatter brush is, um, if you're if you're okay with being messy, that is, uh, is kind of like just angle your camera properly, and that, like to where where this is going to affect, as you'll see, is just kind of like take the splatter and then go over top of something like that, and then it kind of like creates like oh, these lines. Yeah. And so you oh. can kind of build up from there as well. So it can be like this, like really quick, like thing. Because I like to just take this and throw it over to Keyshot really fast as well. So um, having like messy things like that that I can just paint over afterwards, it's like it's perfect. Like I just use a splatter brush to just like do gore and stuff really quick. Wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's, a, that's a great way to show. Like yeah, if you're drool or like food yeah. for creatures stuck in their teeth. Yeah, it's a good technique. When was the splatter brush introduced? Uh, uh, really? Okay, hold like, on. Um, last year. Last year. Okay. We got. We did. We don't release three versions of ZBrush this year alone. Yeah. Plus ZBrush Core, plus ZBrush Core Mini, plus the plus the uh, Summit. It's been a busy twenty twenty one. Yeah, for sure. To say the least. And all on it. Since what? Thanksgiving is coming up, I, I yeah. you know, I want to thank you guys for doing all what you do. I mean, it's, you know, thank you. Sincerely, oh, yeah. thank you, thank you, thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Mm -hmm. It's Absolutely. not just me. There's a big uh, group of people, obviously. Thank you to all of you. Everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a huge yeah. deal. <laughs> it's always fun trying to come up with new ideas and new things and seeing where we can go with it, for sure. Hey, they're moving right along here. We only got about 15 minutes left. Oh, geez. Man. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's hop on. Oh, wait, Shane, did you put candles on? Oh. I'm going to be putting flames. This is just oh, yes. out of them. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, you know, nice. flames. Flamey horns. Like I'm using the what I was talking about, the move in the infinite with the AccuCurve business. Mm-hmm. I love yeah. it. It's my new favorite yeah. thing. I can just. I think Ashley's the one that taught me about AccuCurve, and it's it's been like oh, a lifesaver I... for me and so many different brushes. Dude, snake hook and AccuCurve is the way to go. All you need to make a sculpt: snake hook, AccuCurve, and masking. That's it. That's all you need. Or even or one of my favorite things is like if I wanted to like stylize the shape, like the silhouette of someone's hair, like a character's hair, I can take the standard brush and put on AccuCurve, and then just like create planar changes in the general shape of the hair and it's awesome mm. so simple so, so so stupid simple but it's like it's one of those things it's just like wow that's great it works <laughs> yeah. nice yeah love it i'm getting uh, into the days of just watching you guys as usual just watch yeah i was gonna show. ask like have you even like sculpted anything no <laughs> <laughs> no, I was gonna try, but I figured, you know, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to sculpt anything. Paul deserves a break. He needs a break. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, poor guy. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's let's since we're coming close, where you guys are further along, too, I'll start hopping around to everybody's too. So we're looking at Steven's model. Yes, cookie. Is that a cookie? Oh, it's yeah. so cute. Uh, oh, I want a cookie. <laughs> Little Santa sitting down at his glass of milk. <laughs> <laughs> Love it, baby Santa. Born old. They have to bring that. Make it. I want to. I probably will. You're gonna do what? You're gonna print it. Print it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
Um, Alex, you were asking, yeah, we're doing another one of these with uh, a different set of artists next Tuesday. So um, as long as we can keep these rocking and rolling and artists want to do this, yeah, we'll keep going at it as much as we can. So, but there is another one of these same, same bat time, same bat channel next Tuesday. Different artists though. Except for me, I'm coming back. Oh yes, you're coming back. That's right. <laughs> I are, there, back. are there still spots open? Uh yes. There are right now. I think there's a, still a couple more slots open. So if nobody else wants to jump in, maybe I'll jump yeah. in then too. Sure. Just hit up, you know, hit up Kyle and then uh for sure. To make sure. Yeah, this is fun. Yeah. I'm just I'm just here to uh I don't even know what I'm here for anymore. I'm just here. Awesome. Keep us all just going awesome. along. All right, let's see how Ara's is going. Back to you. Getting a... No. It's reminding me of uh, death a little bit. Well, I think that's kind of the idea. Yeah. The uh, Scrooge. Oh, yeah, it's the spirit of death, right? Yeah. The last one. Yeah. Or yeah. of the future. And, yeah. It's the one that shows him stuff. It's death. It's one of those... Right. Little Timmy. Yeah. You guys all see the uh, Jim Carrey version of the Disney Jim Carrey Christmas Carol? Yeah. Robert Zemeckis, I think, directed it. It's really good. I liked it. Did not. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It. That, that's the, yeah. The, it's the only one that I think is, is good from those, like, all cup movies, you know, motion yeah. capture movies. Oh, yeah. That he did. Beowulf. I think that's the only one that's really good. Yeah. Well, that's, Beowulf, yeah. I like it as well, but. That's Polar weird. Express? You didn't like Polar Express? No. No. Uh, no. 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 Scrooge one. That gives you nightmares. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the music, everything in that in that version of it, the Christmas Carol is fantastic. The acting and everything is just beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, it's a great, great movie. Oh, the design and everything, yeah. Yeah. I think it worked too because they stylized the characters more. They weren't just trying yeah, to go exactly. for quarter realism, they gave them character. I, I, yeah, I think it's I did like Monster House. Oh yeah, that seen... one. Yeah, but the same. It was characterized as well. Yes, it wasn't. Yeah, yeah. Realistic. And they were trying to do that uncanny valley thing. It didn't really work as well. Yeah, you're another. Someone else mentioned Monster House and said it. I should watch it. They said it was good too. Yeah. We watched that one at work for uh, like Halloween, kind of after hours get together, whatever. <laughs> Okay, we're looking at Daniels now, the turkey. <laughs> nice. Yeah, not like super far scene. along, but you know, wound up focusing on the face because uh, I was looking at this guy a lot. This this reference here and just that very yeah angry gnarled scrotum face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what they have. Basically, <laughs> so just having some fun. What'd you call me? <laughs> hey, scrub face, get over here. <laughs> scrub face. <laughs> need some motion. Yeah, this could be a that act part. I my mind went to the new double alpha feature with like the blob brush. It could be some fun thing to do with that. Oh yeah. I still have to try that out, like play around yeah. with that. I haven't had like any time to like super dive into that stuff. I haven't either. Yeah. Oh, I, like alpha. Great. Give us a give us a live demo again, Paul. Live tutorial. Yeah, come on. How do we how do we implement this? How do I do that? How do you how do you implement? Hold on. How do you make Let me that grab really something. <laughs> to be used for people. Let me give him a little more a little more topology. <laughs> ah, blob. Uh, yeah, dee -dee. okay. Let me grab my pen. I'm using my mouse. Where'd my pen go? There it is. Oh, yeah, if, you do, if you use the mouse, that'd be so much more impressive. Oh, yeah, <laughs> use that mouse. It's like typing with boxing gloves on <laughs> the earth mouse. Exactly. <laughs> okay, let me. All right, we'll see. So, the idea behind this is okay, add the stream. Here we go. Okay, so obviously now what's new is in the alpha texture. You guys can do two alphas and two textures on any brush now. Um, and use yeah. pressure sensitivity to swap, swap between them, right? So 
whatever alpha you choose here, right? So this is, let's just say, we'll put a round alpha. So that's your main alpha, okay? okay. And then your secondary alpha could be then whatever you want, right? So let's say something like this. And so what it's gonna use is this graph to choose based upon the pressure sensitivity when to choose flip from the one to the other, mm -hmm. right? So as I start sculpting, you can see I'm getting I'm light right now, and if I go harder, see now I'm getting that, and then I go light, oh, and then harder, and then light, and then hard. So like, this this was fun to just like for skin, like zombie type of thing, and then obviously you can go intestines are in the wrong place, but yeah, <laughs> the sub <laughs> as well. That's crazy, right? So then what I'm doing is I'm transitioning by my pressure sensitivity between these two alphas. Then of course you can add another dot and say which one right is more prominent right of an alpha right so then this is saying this alpha and then now right you can go the other directions with this as well and now you see i'm getting more of that alpha right so now you look you can get this almost reminds me of like clay little strips of stuff right things like that so yeah, i awesome. found the blob brush with like the alphas you can get some really fun crazy stuff and then on top of like that looks almost scab like Mm. throw it on ashley's snowman and now we're talking all right and yeah then, i know that's why i'm like oh god i could use this <laughs> and then what i have also enjoyed uh experimenting with is thick skin man like get yourself some yeah. thick skin in there and you can get some really crazy different stuff happen like that's thick skin now making it so it's plateauing right on your brush so i have found some really fun things for this like I took like the clay buildup and just started making. Well, I wanted to make like a rake, right? So when I'm using clay buildup, like like I'm actually laying out strips of clay, right? That kind of stuff. So I wanted to have that ability to do this. So then I wanted to start playing with this. And so see now I can, there's a plateau. So it's flattening out now. That's awesome. And then again, inward. And then you can just start. So this is more the rake because I'm a little bit lighter. And then if I go harder, I'm getting more of the square. It's almost like a mallet. So now more like a mallet, more of like a rake brush, right? So it's a way to kind of combine multiple brushes in a way, in a sense, like what I'm just trying to do. I'm trying to make this alpha be more like a mallet, and I'm trying to make this be more like a rake, right? And then obviously you can try different and make your own alphas for that matter, right? So so that's, it made me, that what you were doing made me think of this because yeah, yeah. you can transition between different ways of working like is that in the brush stuff. palette or is that in the in the brush palette so it's, it's in, in alpha palette. and texture and then don't forget when you start adding like say like colors right you got to remember there's pressure sensitivity also for the color itself right so now that i've got color in this here we'll fill some color in there really quick go back to having that green just so it's different. so now i'm painting see with the brown and if i push harder i'm getting the green so yeah. what it's doing when I push harder, I'm getting this green and this alpha. When I'm lighter, I'm getting this texture and that That's alpha, awesome. right? So now I can transition between like maybe dirt and then grass and then dirt and then grass. But remember, there's also pressure sensitivity, period, right? So your tablet pressures, as you can see, this particular brush has also controls for RGB, Z intensity and size, which is going to play a role on what's happening down here okay. as well. Right, because this is saying what paint to use when you're lighter and what paint to use, you know, in essence, your intensity of your paint too, right? So this, so you might want to play with that as well, right? So that if I want just solid that brown and then right into the green, then I would come and eliminate the pressure sensitivity of my RGB as well. So don't forget about those things when you're playing with these two, these, these new items down here. So there you go. Does that help? Yeah. yeah. It's awesome. Okay. There you go. Yeah, you, you guys sometimes I'm on Bell so many things, so much things that I need to go back to the videos all the time to remember where they are. Yeah. yeah. I can't keep it straight. Yeah, it's hard to remember it all. Yeah. So we're looking at Franco's now. So how late are we going okay. to today? Uh, right about now. We can go another <laughs> probably 10 minutes at most. So you guys okay with another 10 minutes and then we'll call it a stream? Sure. 
Yeah, it works me, Amy. <laughs> yeah, and you guys can go about your day. Can't get in trouble. Yeah. So we got Franco's now. He's looking at putting his teeth in. I'm just testing if it if it looks. I think it looks better without them. I don't know. I like it without them. I don't know. I actually I actually can't see I any like other it. screen. Oh, there we go. <laughs> okay. Oh my God, I love it. Yeah, they're both good. I think they're both. They give different feelings, right? Yeah, teeth without I like teeth. it with the teeth. I like with just a little bit like of teeth, the teeth. there. Yeah, I like the teeth. <laughs> okay, I do too. <laughs> throw a little, throw a little coffee staining yellow in there. <laughs> oh yeah, he's good to go. <laughs> or eggnog stains, guys. Oh, don't me. I love me some eggnog. <laughs> yeah, I get my I get my uh, Southern Comfort eggnog every year. <laughs> <laughs> At the adult eggnog. <laughs> uh, it's, it's not it's not that kind of it's it's not alcoholic it's uh, uh, okay, what is the best comfort. flavor that i can find <laughs> trader joe's is pretty good yeah everything at trader joe's is pretty good it's hard to go wrong there and then whole foods will usually have a really good ones like from an actual like farm farm like in like old school <laughs> farm jars that used to get dropped off at houses and stuff nice which my relatives still do <laughs> in new york All right, and let's take a look at Andre, your gremlin. Nah, coming to gallery too. Nice. Starting to look like gremlin finally. Yep. <laughs> well, I think in the beginning too, he was looking like a gremlin. The big ears makes it the gremlin look, I think. Yeah, they're still a bit high, maybe. I think they're low, right? Yeah, they'll go a little bit lower. They'll go past his, their chin, a lot of them. But I don't think there's no right or wrong for a gremlin. That's true. If you show it, people are going to go, oh, that's a gremlin. Yeah. Mission accomplished. <laughs> yeah. Gremlin challenge. It's cool. Really fun to make one of those. Yeah. Lots of fun. How's the flames coming here, Shane? Oh, yeah, nice. Wow, nice. There we go. Flame on. <laughs> Flame on. I, was, uh, I picture these kind of uh, like glowing. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. This could also almost be like a so candle good. stick that's. Oh, yeah. You can actually hold mm. candles. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. Or you could even put like little stumpy candles that are the, mac the wax is like melting down his horns. Oh, yeah. Cool, too. Like yeah. Stuck, stuck on the tips of them. Yeah, exactly. He impaled them. Yeah. <laughs> Be cool so to see that in key shot. Yeah, yeah. Get cool yeah, luminescent uh, emissive materials to the flames. Yeah, yeah. I wanna, I wanna do this fur better. This is just a block out fur, but oh, yeah, pretty fun. This guy. Yeah. I like the stitching. The stitching looked good. Came out Thanks. well. Yeah, the four stitches. He's a bit symmetrical, but you gotta love his chest hair, right? <laughs> Smiley man. So that is some serious chest hair. <laughs> Got a lot of tea. <laughs> Too fun. But uh, yeah, he'll be holding his uh, whatever bundle of sticks <laughs> mm -hmm. on fire. Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, to the question about as a beginner sculptor, yeah, I think ZBrush cores are a great way to jump in to the ZBrush atmosphere and the world, seeing that you can either do a subscription of $9.95 per month or perpetual license for $179.95, which we've given free upgrades, um, and including ZBrush has given free upgrades now going on 22, 23 years. Insane. So it, the, 23 years? Twenty. Yeah, the first official, the first sold ZBrush was in 1999. That's the graph. That's them. Okay. Yeah. That yeah. Long yeah. Ago? Well, Matrix reload. Yep. Mm -hmm. 22 wow. going on 23 years. Dang. As far as the, to the public, yeah. But the code obviously was started before that. Um, but the, the new 2022 is not in the core. We just released 2022 like last Wednesday. So core right now is 2021. But that has a lot of great stuff in it for you to get going. So uh, yeah, I think that's a great way to get in and start learning ZBrush and then jump up to what they're all using right now, which is the, 
the full version of ZBrush. That's part of the reason why we made ZBrush Core is to get you going. I'm, yeah, it's crazy. I'm always amazed when I'm, I meet people that don't know ZBrush. Like, it's like, oh yeah, yeah. This time, everybody should know ZBrush. No, no. There's still because yeah. there's just so many different industries now too, and so many different ways of using, right? Mm -hmm. And I think all this technology we have, we've been talking about with printers and stuff, has opened up things too for people. It's crazy though. Yeah. Yeah, I think we just we get we forget because we're in our industry. We're so in it, you know. When you That's talk right, to someone else, yeah. like at a party, I was just at a friendsgiving party. Yeah. Day, like, what do you do? I'm a 3D artist. Oh, so you do animation? Like, no, it's different. <laughs> just sure, yeah. okay, yeah, animation. You know, he, he, <laughs> we all work yeah. for Disney. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so like like Pixar. Like, Did no, you make no. Halo? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And then your friend introduces it. Hey, this guy does animation, 3D animation. Like, no, not really. Okay. Work <laughs> Perpetuates the, the lie. Yeah. <laughs> we'll it's really funny. Out. It's really funny to watch Beeple go on like the talk shows and stuff and try to explain oh. what he does to people. It's hysterical. Yeah. <laughs> it's hysterical. <laughs> you throw NFTs in there, man. It's like, you know, yeah. it's like talking about rockets and um, quantum no physics. Clue. It's hard for people to because it's such a new it's such a new way of thinking the centralization of of funds and all that it's just it's hard for people to they'll confuse Bitcoin with blockchain and it's like people <laughs> I have yeah. friends who just don't have it sorted but that's I think it's a lot of people like we're again we're so on the edge of things we forget that the majority of people out there are just they hear the words mm -hmm. and they get inferences but they don't really it's they a, don't know most people don't think that you can leave as an artist still. I mean, so it's hard. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it, it, all of us worked hard to get where we're at. It's not like it was an easy job to. No, <laughs> no, no, yeah, of, of course, but <laughs> so it is a lot of people think that you cannot live as an artist. Yeah. Still, yeah. To, like today, I and mean, for me, that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, in the chat. So with, the, with the amount of content that they consume and everything, and they don't even stop to think that all that is being done by somebody, and there is right. a lot Computer of new stuff it. all the time. Yeah. Right. A cool button, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Computer makes it. Yeah. Somebody in the chat's like, "So you wait, you drew that?" Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I always say that to me too. Yeah, you drew that. Yeah. And then you get that whole slew of uh, dad joke lines. I couldn't draw a straight line with a ruler. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't draw stick figures. <laughs> I went to I school uphill and came home uphill. <laughs> Went to school uphill both ways. Both ways. <laughs> and four feet of snow. <laughs> and it's always four feet of snow. It's always four feet of snow. I, it, it, I mean, yeah, true, I, though. True. Yeah. Really true. Have done. <laughs> Still do. <laughs> yeah. Walk to work in the snow. Yeah, just anywhere. Four yeah. feet, at least. Or since you brought up NFTs, is, is anyone else um, planning to make some or put some out there? I'm uh, trying to get into it. I did a few at the beginning, or like around March, something like that. Just sold for very little, but it's hard, man. It's hard to keep up with everything, and it's hard to do work and family and then have time for doing that. And I spent my last 10 years of my life like trying to figure out ways of bringing my digital art to the physical world. And when it was, you know, 3D printing came along, it was amazing. And now everything is going back to digital. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's like they're mm -hmm. pushing the, the rules of the game all the time. Yeah, it's a lot to give up with for sure. Yeah. yeah. You're doing some, right? What's that? You're, you're doing some, right? I'm, I'm, working on, I'm working on yeah. a few, yeah, yeah, for myself and with with some other people, yeah. Just I think what I've, from my perspective, I think you just have to have a lot of either a lot of a big fan following already, or yeah. a way to get hype and information. It's like advertising, really, because yeah, there's a lot of great artists out there who have some great looking NFTs, like artistically, creatively, but they're not selling because no one knows who they are, or mm -hmm. there's just not a a momentum to create perceived value behind it. So I think that's hype train is a big part of, you know, or attaching yourself to a known entity of some kind will help you get your name out there in the NFT space. Cause it's like a whole other subset, a whole other subculture kind of. Completely. Yeah. Well, I saw like actually, actually Wood was into the, and he wasn't selling much. Like for example, I don't know. I assume most of people know who actually Wood is. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. I mean, 
freaking awesome artist and he's not selling much for what I saw. Yeah. Because, yeah. yeah and if it's you're amazing not, to just see what is selling. That's what's even more tragic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's not creatively, artistically great. Usually it's a lot of weird stuff that doesn't compute. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, guys, I'm, we uh, probably should call it quits and let you guys get back to your days. Uh, I just love switching between Ashley's and then going straight into Steven's because we go straight from Q to I'm going to walk the other way now. It's <laughs> awesome. Just switch between these two. I'm going, cutie, hello. <laughs> to I just ate that sand up. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to hell. Yeah. <laughs> it's just worked out that both of your guys are like right next to each other in the system too. So it's just funny that they're also because he's going super cute and you're super. Uh, I don't know. Actually, <laughs> I don't know. Just, I don't know. <laughs> so I thank you all for being a part of this. And again, for those watching, we're doing this again next Tuesday, same time, noon which is uh, Pacific Standard Time. So Los Angeles, if it makes it easier for you, Los Angeles time noon is when the stream will start. And we're going to go for about two hours. We went a little bit later today, obviously, to 2.15. So I know Shane said you're going to you're gonna be in the next one next Tuesday. Uh, Daniel might around. be here again next week. We've got some <laughs> other artists, though, next week joining us. But uh, thank you, uh, Andre, Franco, Ooh. Daniel, Ashley, Ara, Stephen, Shane, for being a part of this. Mm -hmm. It's been a lot of fun. These are just fun, just hanging out and sculpting, seeing what you guys are doing, having conversations. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, it was fun. It was, it was chill. Yeah, definitely. Thanks, everybody. Awesome. Absolutely. Yeah. It was we'll, a good here, break we'll, from we'll work. To, we'll switch to all camera <laughs> so we can say our goodbye. So thank you all for being a part of this. And again, uh, we'll have another one next week. Uh, so it should be a lot of fun. Hopefully we'll see you guys. Those are not in it. You guys might be able to have time to jump in the chat and still cheater chatter with us and be sure. part of the conversation. So, and then for those in the U.S., have a fantastic holiday this week. Uh, be safe, please. And then everyone else also, just have great holidays through uh, these next couple months with New Year's Eve and Hanukkah and Christmas and everything else coming up, too. So It's anxiety season. <laughs> oh. I don't know. I, I hope I, not. I love it. Listen, I'm I'm gonna take I'm gonna take a picture of the front of my and you'll get why I love it. And I'll put that on my Instagram because it is Clark Griswold. Okay. Wave one. Wave one. And I have brought in my daughter to the dark side of Christmas lights. <laughs> so I win. So well, thank you all for being a part of that. Have a wonderful day. Again, I'm Paul Gabriel with an amazing crew here for our multi-stream for ZBrush Live Artists. And you've been watching a uh, ZBrush live segment. So thank you. Have a great day. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Bye. Bye. Bye.